the Thinking Tackle Podcast. Welcome to the Thinking Tackle Podcast. Now, the Caravan Park Linear is one of the best looking and most exclusive carp in the country. And our guest today hasn't just caught it once, he's caught it three times. Dave Moore, welcome to the podcast. How on earth did you catch that fish three times? Not on purpose, <laughs> I may add. First time was definitely on purpose, because uh, you know, and the other two captures were, I'll explain, because it, it's easy if I, I tell you the story how I first found out about the, you know, the caravan linear and you know, this our game membership and etc cetera, etc cetera. going back to I was trying to think earlier what year it was but I think it was 2005 I could be wrong but I think it was 2005 I was fishing another lake in that area I fished in that area for just about since since I was 11 years old you know um, but that's another story so I know where all the lakes are in Norfolk area uh, no north north Peterborough it's north Peterborough it's it's round the market deepens or deepens it's it's the start of the fence right you know and uh, I was fishing another lake and it was red hot I mean really hot and I I'd, I'd wound in and we had a walk round and I said to a couple of my friends, do you fancy going for a, you know, a beer somewhere, you know, middle afternoon, you know, just to get out of this heat? And I said, I'd drive. So I didn't, it weren't, weren't, well, I did have to look for volunteers, you know, and I knew I wasn't going to get back quick if I decided to drive. So we had a little wander around, around and we had a sort of thinking about where to go. And I thought, I know, I'll go to... Maxi, which is a village that's just on the south side of West Deeping. And the reason I knew there was a nice little pub there is because a few years earlier I'd looked at the house that was for sale opposite. And it was a lovely thatch, thatch roof cottage, but that's against another story. So I went to this pub and it weren't long before, as I expected, my, my fellow colleagues were drinking far faster than I could even <laughs> even hope to uh, so I ended up talking to the barman and as I'm talking to the barman I noticed underneath the till there was a picture pushed upright and it was it got a, a tail of a carp on it so I says what's that so he pulled it out there is this absolutely incredible looking fish mm. and I says where's that from and he says it's from Caravan Park, just down the road. <laughs> well, I knew this this lake. No, nah, it's not. No, nah, it can't be. It's, and of course, they get really out of, the guy that caught it will be in here later. You know, and he told me how big it was. And at the time, I think it was 42. But he, in the picture, but that had been caught some years earlier. Mm. And he says, oh, he's caught it even bigger than that now. It's 48 pound. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I knew where every fish was in that area. And there wasn't any, fi you know, that was a complete shock, you know, to have a fish that size, basically, that I didn't know about. So I told him to put the picture back, so none of my mates <laughs> saw it, like you do, you know. So he did. Uh, anyway, the following, the, that was like a Saturday, Sunday that day, uh, the following day, instead, I packed up and drove, because I knew exactly where the lake was, drove to the lake, and you you can actually walk round one side of it. Mm. So I walked round side of it, and there was a father and son sat there fishing for carp. And uh, he just looked at me and says, I wondered how long it would be before you came here. <laughs> and I, and I, I says, oh, that's nice. I, I'm Dave. He says, I know you are. <laughs> uh, so we got talking, and, and I says, yeah. I says, I, this is he says, you do know it's near 50 now, don't you? I says, well, according to a guy in pub, yeah, yeah, he says, uh, I said, but it's closed shop, isn't it? I said, yeah, well, there's about 10 on the syndicate. And he, and he, and, uh, he says, mm, yeah, he says, but you can get to fish it, you know. So I said, what do you mean? He says, you need to get yourself a caravan and joint caravan club, <laughs> and you can fish that bit of bank over there. Right. And uh, so, as you can imagine, Monday at work, on the phone, 
looking for caravans. <laughs> by <laughs> Wednesday, I got one. <laughs> and by Friday, I not only had I got a caravan, I'd also had a tow bar fitted on the, the truck I had at the time, courtesy of RJB Mining, uh, and, and was heading down to for my first trip on the that, caravan park. That easy, Dave. Yeah, yeah, that easy. So I pulled up on the in the car park for the first time. So I, I, you know, I've done, apart from just getting access, I've done very little research now. So I pulled on, and there's a couple of the caravans there, and I went up and said, you know, what's who do you know how does all this work and she said oh the one of the one of the girls one of tony's girls which i found out later tony was the owner of several lakes in that area and he had three daughters and basically had given them all a lake that they, they looked after and uh, we'll come and collect your money and then i had a little look i thought well the only place i can really fish is here so i fished first first weekend uh, what does the lake look like then, and how big is it? Oh, it's not very big. It's, it's, um, it's sort of a, a square. It's sort of a perfect square, but it has got a bay that goes off. Now, at the time, you, the, we used to refer to it as Caravan Point. The Caravan Point, you could fish the bay that was to your left and the tree line to your right. You couldn't fish, there was a, uh, like a bowl of water in front of Tony's house, which was totally, that was round a corner. Most of the time, the fish couldn't even get in there. I mean, when I first went, that, even the, even the bay to the left would go a little bit of water in the entrance, that was it. Because the water levels did go up and down considerably um, during the time over there. So, you know, the, you know, it, it was probably... It is, should I say. It's probably about five acres. Mm. You know, it's not a big lake. Um, many, many fish in it? There was then. I mean, at that time, I mean, compared to what's happened in in the last few years, you know, there have been... It can't be fenced. So it's been predated on really heavily by otters. So, you know, you know the anglers that go there now are fishing for a... A, 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 a small amount of fish compared to where I mm. first started. I mean that first that first weekend, I managed to catch a, a little double from from basically stalk from underneath the tree, you know. But you know, it gave me a little bit of an idea of what I was up against. You know, the fact I could only fish, you know, I'd got choice of one, two, three, four swims. In reality, it's probably really three because. You know, the two of them sort of were a bit, even though there were, one was down a path, in on, into its own little, little little enclave. You, know, the the swim, the what they call the high bank swim, fish the same water. So if there was somebody in the high bank, you know, you you, you, you were limited. Were they pressured fish? No, no, not really. I used to be. I said pressured fish. You couldn't go there. There. I, I, you know, like I said, this. I ended up going there. I think it was about. It'd be. It'd be about this time of year. It would, would be, you know, mid September, first time I ever went. So and this, the caravan site closed um, first of November, and and in them few coming weeks, you know, before it shut, and was never there alone, fishing from the caravan side. I got to know some really nice people. I, I mean, uh, to be honest, I miss it, miss all of them, and I'd love to know where they all are. There was a couple, Dave, Dave, and I think it's Pam. They had an Alsatian. They were there on a regular basis, and and there was another, there was another, you know, few other people that you know, that, that came. You know, it was like a, almost like a little family run thing, and you know, we'd sit and have a glass of wine with each other and things, and. Anyway, when it came to pulling off, I mean, I caught, I caught that first little period. I, I more or less caught fish every, every time I went from then onwards. But you, I think the, I ended up I think the best fish that, like I said, that first month and a bit was a fish they call spade tail, at low thirty. It's got, it had had something that had done its tail. It weren't fish damage or anything. But I did see somebody else catch a fish 
that wasn't supposed to be in there. I've been mm. told by people that, you know, the, there was a couple of low 30s and big one, that was it. Uh, well, they'd forgotten the the fish that was two or three ounces under 40. There's another mirror in there that, that I saw another angler catch. I, I, I weighed it. I photographed it for him a lot. Had the fish all gone in there at the same time? Do you know how old no, the fish were? Oh right. God, no, no. Uh, the lake, the lake was stocked in the sixties. So, them fish, them bigger fish that that are there, was there then, they weren't anything to do with them. I mean, in fact, I, I got to talk to Tony in length years later. So, I mean, they'd put them, they put the stock fish in fifties as well, but. It, and he's, he th he thinks that they put the fish first into into um, into Maxi at about sixty one. That's that lake, because literally there was another lake that side. There was another lake that side, and you went. And they owned them all. The family owned them all. Uh, so you know, there weren't them fish, because I can remember going. To Maximus, I told you I know everywhere. I went once when I was about fourteen or fifteen, <laughs> and it was a runs water. I mm. mean, full of two or three mm. pounders. It, we rammed with them. Mm. Um, so uh, th that was what also surprised me. But I then found out that that the reason the stock had been thinned out so heavily was that had a pollution outbreak from the pig farm next door, which had flooded into into the lake basically nearly wiped out nearly 80% of everything that was in there but the 20% that was left bred you know and there was we weren't sure whether they came from the 76 summer or the 84 summer because this is getting into details that I learnt later because I do know people that caught the big linear at in the early, in the late in the late eighties at seventeen pound and twenty two pound and and then in the mid nineties it come out at thirty. Well, that fish was growing, so that fish didn't come from any of them early stockings. It has got to have been spawned in there. In fact, it, I think it's the only fifty pound plus carp you can hundred percent say was born wow. and grew in that lake. Wow. Yeah. Um, was it getting caught very often? No. No, it, it, when I when I that year that I first went, it hadn't been caught at all. It had done five years between captures in past, um, and it was a fish that everybody was pursuing. There was a couple lads that fished there really before me, but I got to know them. Two nice guys, serious they, carp anglers. Oh yeah, serious carp anglers. They'd both caught it, and there was another really serious carp angler fishing there who'd who'd. Him and his mate had pursued it, and one of them actually caught it before I did, and that was the following that, that you know the next year. So, first of, first of November, I had to go. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't fish, you know, because the caravan park was shut. That you know the syndicate then took over the whole lake, so they could because they couldn't fish the caravan side, but couldn't winter time they could. But I mean they had a hell of a lot more space and opportunity than than than. Uh, than, than anybody that went on the caravan. Mm. Some of the caravanners never even wanted mm. to go anywhere else but on on you know, on that side. But did you, know, you try and turn things in your favour with, with you know with, with with the restricted space that you well, had? Yeah, well, what I did is in end you know within within weeks, I I, I negotiated a little deal with with um, Josie who was uh, was running the the caravan site that I could leave my caravan there, and I said I'll just pay for it. You know, it was a fiver a day. I'll just pay for it, and when I come, I'll just pay for me fishing on top. In end, she just didn't bother taking money off me. You know, so I mean, it was like you're out of way. You're not bothering anybody because nobody wants to fish. They used to call it secret swim. Nobody wants to fish down there. You just, you just, just, just crack on. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and she'd obviously translated the deal to her younger sister because when she was away, if her younger sister come. I, you know, I'd just back, get money out to give it her, and she said, oh, no, it's David, isn't it? That was it. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, they, they made me feel really welcome from day one. So I had really one swim, so whatever I was going to do at that point in time was 
going to be from that one swim. So I mapped it all pretty heavily. So I knew where all the silt was, where all the hard patches was. It wasn't a deep lake. You know, and baited it. I, could, I knew for a fact if I put quite a bit of bait in on Monday, nobody was going to go anywhere near it until I turned up. You know, so this five. is, sorry, this was... The uh, autumn time through into 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 winter. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I didn't bait it that heavily, but you know, but but I, that was going to be my plan for the ne following year because I'd already put stuff in place when it when it opened. I was bringing my caravan back, and basically I was going to, you know, I think it was, I think it was about fourth of April or something like that. They were open, so the caravan was back for fourth of April, and then I would start. Fishing, you know, the did you did you find areas in that swim that you think that fish was would particularly like to feed? Well, on? I found an area that I caught a lot of fish off. Yeah, you know, so if if they were all feeding on it, why why won't them? And I mean, what was that gravel or silt? Silt. Hmm. And you know, when I started, the silt was probably four foot deep. By the time I'd finished fishing in it, it was about six. You know, they'd eaten. The bottom away eventually. It was, you know, it was. It was going deeper by the week. As how, how much bait do you think you put in over that period? Uh, I probably get through 200, 200 to three hundred kilo from from the other, from like starting in April. I mean, the first, my first trip, I'd been down baited up on Wednesday because the beauty about this, where Maxi used to be, it was exactly the same distance from work to there as it was from work to home <laughs> so so you know and I've got a caravan there with a shower all the clothes I need suits and all the rest of it so I could do overnighters without without really being too you know without being messy you know because I could keep clean and I could you know I could jump in my car every every morning as though I was good it was just like gonna work but from Instead of north south, I was going south north, so that helped. So it helped me a lot with the b baiting up as well, because you know I, I sometimes go down. I, you know that first time that I went when I started baiting up, I went down Sunday, went down late. So be, you know April time, it's it's getting dark. I like, got as much baiting as I could, slept in the caravan, went to work, but I didn't actually go back to the lake then till Wednesday. So I went back Wednesday, getting there just before dark got the rods in do you oh. think it's sorry sorry dave do you do, do you think having one swim and having one area actually was to your advantage at that point no <laughs> it was make best with what i could yeah you know i mean i, I it was it, it was i knew i could catch fish from this this spot from from you know previous previous trips and i knew that i'd created something that the fish were definitely homing in on, on a regular basis um but it, it, you know, given the the ideal, I wanted access to other two sides, you know, which I hadn't, and uh, and it, it it didn't feel like you got handcuffs on. I knew I knew I would eventually catch that fish from from that swim. I, I got no doubts in my, in my mind. I would I would. You can't keep, you couldn't keep catching at the rate that I, rates that I were catching without start catching them catching it, and very quickly. The fish that I'd seen the previous year, at just under forty, I caught, which again, like, says you are def if that's fish that didn't exist, you're properly on the right track. And I caught that. It was over forty when I caught it. I mean, it's, it's a it's a story that I documented in a magazine some years ago because it was, I, I, I my mate Alex was with me just just at it. You know, he just called in to see me. He lives locally, and. Um, <laughs> and he, he tell, he'll tell the story as he said I, he watched me walk out because he got he got stuck around a tree into to, to my right and he watched me walk across this bay with a rod and a head torch on and I never stopped I never broke step, step all the way across even when I went underwater <laughs> and he says and he's got the torch on me and he said I started to panic because he said he said he started to panic he says you just carried on walking he says yeah just just went under he says <laughs> and, it, and it came up other side and but main thing is is I, netted, I I got the fish I got the fish and I mean and it was you know you know I class that as one of one of the 
one of the other jewels that Maxi had at the time. Were you tap? Were you? Ta- do you think you were tapping into these fish purely through baiting tactics, or was it a combination of presentation and baiting? It, it was. It was. At the time, I was fishing tactical. It, I'd been fishing a, a, a bait and a rig that had proved itself time and time and time and time again. I totally and utterly got hundred percent faith in it. You know, and it's 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 something that goes back that I, that I first tied up in uh, mid early nineties, early nineties when I was fishing Duncan Kays, and it did the same there. And every water I went to after that, that approach, that bay, it worked. You know. What type of rig was it then? It's a, it, it's basically it's a s- s- supple up length, and I used a a quite short shanked hook with a, a, a whip D rig on it that I used to whip on myself but that was back I extended the shank slightly and I used to bung lead wire mm-hmm. in the in the in the the shrink the shrink tube and then shrink it so the lead wire was slightly moldable so I could get it basically so it basically sunk like that but it had also got basically an extended shank like a long shank you but it bent i love i love that yeah, yeah. and it bent you know and it it, it just and i always do, use do, do you think it's the um do you think it's the weight the the extra added weight at the end of that hook that i've watched so many carp stalking get that hook caught on the lip on outside and panic i know it is it's, <laughs> weight, it, yeah. it's like so you could see it stuck it's stuck because the, the lead wire is round here. And but, then but, it, you, but you need the extension to be able to create that, that little yeah, bit yeah, of leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, the, you know, it, uh, then they'll do this. You'll see it bait go out, in, yeah, out, in. And eventually it's like it's not coming and they move. And as soon as they move, the lead does the rest. So, I mean, I'd, I'd be, I'd be and, and I also, I mean, for, this goes back a long way. Um, back to late late 80s I'd messed around trying to get what I call the perfect pop-up because at that time we'd gone through microwaving grilling them frying them you name it everything and without the doubt the best pop-up and I still use them to this day I make my own I like them to be completely the same as the bait that I'm using uh, to the point where I'll only use really small amounts of of hardening materials to just to change that paste, I use the exact same levels of flavour, etc. That's that, that's in them, so they just look like the bait that I'm using. And I've got to I've got to give this I've got to give credit to a guy called Mick Daly. I don't know what happened to Mick, but that he I fished with him a bit at Longfield and lovely lad, lovely guy. And we were both at the time experimenting it you know wrapping paste around poly balls and all the rest of it and we used to make bait on bank back then anyway this particular trip that we were fishing together he said i'm gonna make some bait and he makes and he pulled this springham out i don't know if you know what a springham is it was a tool that mr Hutchinson marketed for making boilies and it was like it was this leather punch with two completely perfect cups on the either side and you basically got your paste and all that. And it was oh, yeah. uh, about as much use as a chocolate fire guard for making um, making boilies. But I saw this, and I, it, well, I don't know who it closed brain clicked first, whether it was mixed or mine. He picked it up, put a piece of paste in one end, shoved a poly ball in it, put a paste in the other side, clicked it together. <laughs> that was it. Perfect, mm. perfect puff up, and it, and because. In years, I, I poly balls weren't the best thing. What I found was the best thing is, and they were stolen out of my li- what a, a toy of my little brother's, and it was like a perfect plastic, you know, sphere, you know, hollow, but with, you know you couldn't crush it. So, but you could rub it up. You could rub up the kit. It was like a thing that you pressed. You know, even in fact, he was far too old for it, so he wouldn't have missed it anyway. But yeah, but they were, they were they were perfect diameter for making fourteen mil pop ups, and you could ju- all you needed to do was rough the outside up, and and cause 
we start we, we we made mistakes we learned that actually you need to put a bit of reg album in or a little bit of 30 mesh casing just to stiffen the paste up to get a bit more longevity also tying them on was the only real way without destroying whatever you had done of course it's developed from then mm. to coat balls and everything you know, by this time when i'm a maxi i'm using coat balls but I'm still exact same pro process you know mm. that i did right back then so i i was i could i didn't feel confident using anything else mm. um going back to the, catching the maxi mm. linear i mean um i'm you know I'm, I'm, I'm ensconced in the in the secret swim um and it comes to it comes to um the syndicate renewing the the permits and i just happened to me mention to 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 josie who was the, that you know something i says you know this this arrangement we've got it's not really fair and she says no we've been talking what she didn't realize i wasn't saying what she <laughs> no. thought i was saying she said, yeah i've been talking to me dad she says and uh, and and and, the, and Vanessa has been talking to, to him. Um, he wants you to go up to house. So I, I thought, well, I'm not going to say what, because what I was saying is that really I, I ought to, because if my caravan were there and I were in a swim, what I was saying, I should pay for the whole lot, not just pay uh, not just pay for my caravan, I should pay for the fishing as well at the same time, which would, you know, but she, she'd, she'd seen it completely different. Lee, one of the lads that I got to know, Lee Ellis, um, you know, on I mean, if it weren't for Lee, I, I probably wouldn't have. I wouldn't have probably, you know, got onto, the, got on the lake in the first place because Lee had got Tony's ear and he must have spoke to Tony, so he put a word in for me besides the girls. Um, so off I went up to the Big Brother house. I mean, it, it, it and uh, and I had met Tony before, you know, a few, a few years earlier. But he invited me in. We went into his study, and he says, "All oh, right, yeah, yeah." And he says, "Sit down." And he—he he was a, a lovely guy. He was most really unassuming, not very big. And he says, uh, "The girls have been, have been saying nice things about you." And Lee says, "You, you're a nice guy," and all the rest of it. And he says, "And I understand you want to, you know, a, a ticket to fish, you know, for the lake." Uh, and it was like. Uh, you know, what do you say? Mm. Yes, please. And it's like you know, and it was—I can't remember how much it was, but it, it, I don't think it was eighty quid. What? Yeah, I won't. He didn't do any of it for money. You know, trust me. Um, how did he normally? Get, um, I mean, was there a waiting list, or I mean, was it just? Um, did you need to know him? To, Worst to thing you could ever do, and people did it time and time again, is go up to his door and, and knock on him. his door. Mm. It was only going to happen by people would only get membership by recommendation or, or being around. If you, I suppose that's the, that's the way, and it always has been that way. Um, you know, I, we've a, a lot of us have had influence. It, it had a lot of time for me, did, did Tony. In fact, I've got a letter that you know says that I can fish any of his lakes anytime I want. You know, still to this day, you know, he had a lot of time for me, but. Um, because I did once I'd met him and once we'd had a good chat I knew that he'd be the sort of guy that ever so often you nipped up had a cup of tea with him showed him a few pictures at fish he'd appreciate it and he did you know as soon as he were comfortable with you so that's me now I've now got a, a, a ticket to go anywhere basically well apart from apart from the in front of his house and again at that time it would dry anyway um, he uh, and I can always remember that weekend I went back and all of them knew all of them knew that, that on the syndicate that I'd met there was a there was a fa the father son that I was telling you about the weekend I was told they'd also know I'd gone up to the house so when I came back they were actually they had, were in the caravan, uh, caravan that weekend with all of them and uh, 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 you know they says have you got it then and they all knew <laughs> uh, and we had a bit of a party that night yeah, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And some, somehow, in between all this party, managed to catch another couple of decent fish that I didn't know was in there. You know, the one that became the. Uh, there were I, I can't remember the names. I thought it was dark common or black common or long common. Something I caught one of them, 
and another one that wasn't supposed to be in there. Um, but sadly, I think I lost the big lin that weekend. I wasn't hundred percent, but I think I did. What you makes know? you say that? Uh, it, it was a big fish. It, I'd got it. I'd got it under control. It were all but over, but just to the to the right hand side of me, the bay I'd walked across earlier in the year had got a, 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 a real bad sort of um, it was a willow tree that had been cut off so all the all the roots were still underneath and this fish suddenly just shot into that and I couldn't stop it and I mean when I turned it over I thought shit that's got a linear down once and then it was oh. gone and next thing I know it's oh. off so I don't know was it because it I mean, at the time, at the time, I think there was another linear in there, but it was only, you know, it was a small fish, but I, it didn't feel like that. So that was that really opened it up, you know, my, my next trips. The caravan, I kept the caravan there. I was going to say you uh, didn't sell it then. No, 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 no. The caravan coming useful. It eventually, event. <laughs> in fact, it's a shame I didn't. I should have. If we'd had this conversation yesterday, I just could have showed you what happened to it. Because eventually I, I, I took it apart because I didn't know what to do with it. I took it apart bit by bit, disposed of it bit by bit, <laughs> all bar the chassis. And the chassis is now a trailer, <laughs> which is actually behind, you know, where, where we were yesterday, the, you know, the, yeah. where the bar is, where the grass is. Yeah. It's actually in the grass <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, what's left of it. Yeah, but no, I, I kept it there because, again, it was just handy. Yeah. Yeah, even though I got the whole lake, it was it was handy. You know, to have, have a shower, a nice toilet, that it, you know, to be able yeah. to cook proper meals. So you know, it was, you know, uh, and it meant that my fishing gear just shoom, shrunk down to mm. very little. Mm. Yeah, you know? and uh, but it wasn't. I mean, once it had been opened up to that other side, you know, I did see. You know, I'd, I'd fished with a couple more of the syndicate lads. And I mean, I think one of the first trips I did um, with it, with Lee and Keith, which were both on the scene, Keith got it. Keith caught the linear out of a, a swim we caught um, snags, you know, which was, you know, I, I thought, well, that's it. You know, I think it'd be only 4th or 5th of June, something like that. Um, you uh, thought that'd be it for a while? Uh, yeah, I thought that'd be it bit for a while, but, you know, I, I thought, I don't know this side. I don't know all the stock. There was places there that the fish I knew went to regularly where you could watch them. Mm. You, you know, snaggy areas, you know, on the roadside bank, up at the back of the the, the caravan point, there was a, a tree line that came right out and they used to get right underneath there. You could get up the top of the bank if you crawl through the brambles and watch them. So cause I wanted to know what other stock was in it. And it weren't long before I was seeing fish that, I mean, there was... There was a fish that used to accompany the big linear that was only slightly smaller than the linear. It was common, um, and I don't think ever got caught. Really? Yeah, I don't think, and I don't think, and the reason I don't, well, I don't. I mean, there've been, been, there's been fish a lot bigger in the last few years come out, but I don't think it's that, you know, because well, I, I know it's not because they all know which ones they are. And this was then when when the 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 four or five commons that were in there were anywhere between thirty and thirty three. This looked more like forty to forty five, but it were always with the big one, and and to the point where I can remember sitting underneath this tree line, rolling baits down to the down onto the onto the gravel. And you know you'd have to keep doing it because the build of all the fish come in, and eventually you'd get and you see the the big one come in, it stopped. It, it, it ate. You know it wasn't one to an animal that didn't, but that never came forward, didn't it? Never. It it used to sit at its sides, you know, and I'm con I'm convinced that that fish had been totally imprinted to wait for food to fall out the back end of this big fish. Eat each other's shit, don't they? Mm. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to use that word. For yeah, politeness. sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and and if you think about it, you're an animal with very simple needs, yeah. very simple 
if you know, you've, you've evolved very simply. If your whole world is fine, if you just follow that, mm. you know, because th- th- there must be th- there's some form of social hierarchy in fish. Mm. That, you know, I've watched them often enough. But you know, if you see that, you just think, no, when you, you never catch it. If it never comes forward, just waits. You know, you never have. Because I've always said, as soon as the linear dies, that will probably get caught. Because the the other thing about the the linear, oh, I'm jumping the gun. I'll come back to that. So well, I've got to move. I can move around. And okay. It's not it's not long before I realise that this big fish in daytime just moved from one set of snags to another. Mm. And it, if it wasn't in if it wasn't in the ones of the roadside, mm. it was in the ones up up um, just to the left of the better swim. Uh, but it used to move because you'd go up and watch it, and it knew it knew. You know, I could watch it, and it knew I hadn't scared it or anything. It just suddenly decided to go, and you could walk all the way around to the other and sit there and wait. If you waited long enough, in fifteen minutes, and it'd come. I used to swim around a little bit of there and sod off. And if you walk back, it would go back to the same place. So it would actually take in whatever route. In it. And I, I did lots of timings on this. The shortest route from them snags to them snags, which is a direct line. Mm. It's got to be. Mm. You know, I'd never seen anything in this corner you know, at all, probably because it was thick silt. So I thought, well, it must come in a direct mm. line. And I, I, I pondered this. And I fished a couple of times after I'd seen this happen, and then I kept thinking, "Well, it's bloody there again. It's up there again." You know, um, I need to fish on that line. That's where I need to fish. So it was a bizarre one. I can say this now because nobody can come. Nobody can. Nobody can tell me off or sack me or anything. But the day I caught it, I wasn't going fishing. I was driving to work, and it was a lovely day. And it'd be about half past six in the morning. And I just thought, I just had this feeling. Sod going to work, I'm just going to keep going. Because as I said, they were halfway at A1. So I just kept going. And then, <laughs> and then I just, just kept going. And I was, I was, I oh, was. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I, I made a phone call. So, you know, so I'm not coming in today. They'll put me a day's holiday in and all the rest of it. But I, I just thought, I'm not going. And, um, and I ended up. Going to this swim, they call it the reed swim, and looking at there, and the f- the the big one used to go in a snags at that side. It weren't there, so I had a little walk up where it was, up that side, waited long enough. Well, it was there, so I thought I can't remember the call this swimming corner now. But anyway, I set up, I set up in in that swim. I thought three a line, one, two, three, and I did, and I I, I baited as much, uh, not very heavily, but as little as I thought possible. I knew they'd all, they knew my bait, all fish knew my bait, that they, they'd seen that much of it. Um, Sorry, what bait were you using at the time then? I was using my version of Big Fish Mix, were which you? is the original version of Big Fish Mix, which I had to buy most of the ingredients because it weren't being made like it were. But anyway, that's another story. Mm. Um, it, it, so I'm on this line and I caught a fish quite quickly a 23 funny enough I recognised that fish from being underneath the same snags ah. so I thought I'm on right lines here and I, it was getting I'd, I'd fallen asleep but even though I was only sat because I was fishing out at the back of my truck I'd fallen asleep on a little chair it was about half past two in the afternoon and I'm thinking well I have actually to, I've got to go home so I, I, you know, I, I had to pack up and gone for five o'clock, you know, because I had to go home. I think at the time I got to go home to pick the truck. up. You know, it was about six, I think. So I, that's probably right. It probably was two thousand six. Um, and uh, so I was just sort of, you know, think contemplating. You know, I ain't wasted a day. I've caught a fish. My middle rod shot off. As soon as I hooked this fish, I knew which one it were. But yeah, it was. It was. It was, there was nothing in there that would do what it did. And I mean, it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably one of the best fighting fish you could come across. I mean, it's, didn't have, since, since this time, there were very little weed 
well there was zero weed in lake then since then it's had various years where it's been a bit it's been unfishable to somewhere in between so this fish can just it could go as it can go 100 meter runs if it mm. wants mm. you know and and and, it, and as you slow slow it down it starts to surf comes up you know and it loves loves turning over uh but anyway i for some reason i just knew i wasn't gonna lose it no matter what happened i wasn't gonna lose it uh it made a it made a dash for the for the snags that were that side that i said to you before that it used to visit well, when it tried to do that i thought sod this i'm gonna stop it so i jumped in you know went up went up edge and got in between it and i ended up landing it basically chest deep did you let's say am i yeah and uh, and that was it you know uh, it, uh, it's a bit like it didn't really matter what it weighed but i weighed it i think it was 53 God, 53 blimey. 12 12 at the time um it was just over the moon and God. i and i, I gave my mate alex a ring and asked him if he'd come and photograph it yeah me. so he come photographed it and by half past five quarter six i was on my way home Oh, that was a good day. That was a good day. Talk about intuition. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, as as you drive as you drive home, I, I just thought, yep, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. How? Mm. Yeah, you know, but do you notice that happens very often? Uh, <laughs> not as easy as that. <laughs> but I, I, I've, it's a bit like I said to me one of my mates last night, just before I left him, I was fishing on my lake. Uh, I said I could smell fish. He so says, you'll catch tonight. And I've got a text message this morning. You were right, Dave. I've, I've had 20... Wait, 20 which, which, which guy was that? David. David. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, yeah. Hut David. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, he messaged me and he had a... I, can't, I, I don't know whether it says 28-14 or 23-14. I can't really see it properly linear. So he was... He was he's happy. But, yeah. but pure intuition I mean it just comes out of nowhere yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean there is there is there is and I'm sure maybe it's me <laughs> that's just a bit odd but I'm sure when you get a lot of fish activity you know in in, in close in there's a scent given off in fact I know this I don't know why I'm saying that because I've smelt it at Bundy's because them fish spent quite a lot of time close to the surface and there were a lot of mm. them in mm. when they were banging around and you know doing all the jumping and everything the smell must somehow leave the water you know because you can smell them you know it smells like like a fish you know? did you notice that yesterday yeah yesterday 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 last thing yesterday yeah when I went, just 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 after you'd left I went back to see him, have a cup of tea, and I, I says, it smells of fish, Dave, and he says, yeah, he says, he says, I, I wondered if it, if it were just me. And I says, Do you think they are stimulated a lot by their own smells then? Well, I said, it's, it's a proven. I, th I thought it was. Well, it depends how you, you what you want to class as smell. You know, a, a carp's a pheromone or a yeah. Well, yeah. that's it. I mean, carp's can't smell like we smell, but because it lives in a different call it an atmosphere mm. far more denser atmosphere it it picks its smell up from from minute microscopic chemicals within the water that it can that but well, it does have an olfactory system but it just works completely different mm. to ours mm. so you know and they're certainly heavily affected by by um the presence of hormones and and pheromones you know it it can it can have a positive and a very negative effect on them i think any fish farmer will tell you that you know when they when when you seem to get high mortalities around spawning it's when the water temperature is shooting up and down and that's because the you know because of our weather but what it does to fish it starts off the process we're going to go all start getting frisky and and you know what follows and then suddenly water temperature drops you know, it's all gone. So I mean, they're up and down, up and down. I've always found that that when we've had springs like that, the mortality rate's been bad. It'd be interesting to know what people's opinions are on this year, because this year, certainly in North Yorkshire, and I'm connected to a lot of waters in North Yorkshire, the mortality rate's been 
almost zero, you know, because it just got hot, you know, the water temperature shot up late May, early June, and they've stayed there ever since. I mean, even my lake yesterday was still 20 degrees, you know, you know, it's been How do you think it's affecting them when it is going up and down and to there to there? But is it is it just stress levels? I think it's stress. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to do. If you're suddenly getting yourself into condition to do, I mean, I'm probably not the ideal person to answer this, but if it, it, just to me, it makes sense. If you're getting ready to do something, and then suddenly you can't. I could give you a human analogy, yeah. <laughs> but probably not appropriate. <laughs> but you, you understand what I mean—the stress, stress yeah. that would cause. Mm. So it's got to <laughs> cause it in. It's got to cause it in in, in you know, even primitive um, mm. creatures. And, it, and if you talk to anybody that's a fish farmer or a, a biologist, you know the biggest killer of fish is stress. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Nothing, yeah. Interesting point. Mm. So after um, after catching it the first time, I mean. Did you did you not want to just call it a day and, and move off somewhere else? Well, what I thought because I I told what you spoke earlier, I wanted to catch that common, but probably I, what I'd seen, I hadn't I hadn't mentally processed into it not being very possible. <laughs> you know, you know, blind ignorance. I think that's it. This is I'll come to thinking about. It. How, how you should think when you're fishing. So I carried on thinking that that now I've caught that, that fish is going to be spooked. You know, it's going to, it's not going to have this, it's going to be, it's going to go and sulk. The fact is, is the day I put it back, um, two days later, one of the lads says, oh, it's doing the same as it normally does. You know? <laughs> So it did not bothered it very much. W- was that was that a unique pattern for just that fish, or were a lot of fish following? Oh, the same? there was there was there was many constant fish. traffic. Yeah, yeah, constant traffic. It wasn't just that fish. It was just that I knew that's where it was. Mm. I mean, it changed. Mm. It did change its habits. But you know, uh, I thought to myself, well, I'm not. I'll keep off that track for a start because I thought that might give me. But uh, that rather, again, naively. Just, just you know, it's hard to avoid to catch anything as it is to catch it. Um, but I thought oh, I'll just see. And uh, like I said, I think that was. I think if me, if I'm right, I think the date was about 19th of July. Um, and that year they didn't spawn. Yeah, it was 19th of July, and I'd carried on. It's a male, by the way, William. Really. So oh, right. It's a male. Right. Um, I, it, I carried on. I carried on fishing. I, I thought, well, I'll, 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 I'll try other options. You know, still, still watching all of them. And I went round to a fim, swim we call Kingfisher Swim. I thought I'm going to do a little bit of time in that. They call it Kingfisher Swim because the, 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 the swim was in a little holler, and in the bank behind you was a kingfisher nest. I used to sit at top, basically on top of its nest, and it'd come and go all day. You know, it never bothered. They weren't bothered about anglers at all. Um, and I caught a few fish that I can definitely say I hadn't seen before. Certainly one, because it had got it had got a, a dorsal fin, a tail, and two pecs, but nothing else. You know, it, it was, and it, it wasn't until I'd actually photographed it that I realised, oh, it ants. Um, so I knew I and I'd never seen that anywhere, you know. And it was it wasn't a particularly big fish, you know, upper twenty something like that. Um, and it was I carried on, and it was August bank holiday, Sunday I think of August bank holiday weekend. I was the only person on the lake, and I got a, I got a take at this fish. And I, oh god, <laughs> I knew exactly which it was, and I got it in the net, and and. Then, I thought to myself, it ain't going to be any bigger. I'm just going to take the hook out and let it go, because there was lots of people now on there that wanted to to catch that fish, and I didn't want to deny, d- deny them the opportunity. From that point onwards, me and Maxi finished really. Mm. You know, uh, when I, I knew that I'd have to go and look for somewhere else because I couldn't. You know, I got I got more respect for. People, you know, like 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 Lee and and then mm. and and other lads that would that would, you know, it needed to be their turn. Mm. Um, and I mean, uh, I can't remember where I went. 
you uh, west of that year, cause it's some, some time ago, but I, I, I went, I, you know, I, I went off. But I did used to sometimes go back, if because I did fish in that area, to float fish, because that was the easiest way to prevent catching things you didn't want to catch, mm. you know. And I had some real good, good, good sessions on uh, you know float fishing there. And, it, it, and funny, funny, we we talked briefly about how match fishing stuff earlier brings how it comes into our as carp fishing. Perfect example was I couldn't get a carp on Maxi to take a floater with any hook size bigger than a size 10. They just wouldn't. Hmm. I mean, they'd come up, as soon as you dropped a size 10 on, you know, really? you'd get seven, hmm. eight fish in a day, hmm. you know, floater fishing when they were when they were having it. But you'd try fishing anything bigger. I did try a little few dodgers, but because I lost a few hook pulls, and you don't like doing that. Um, I did tie a few of my dodges, which is, I use, I use a fake bait that looks like it's got a hook in with the hook on the top. Right. Yeah. So, oh, so it, yeah. So it's a bit, it's a bit it's, it, and it, it worked to a degree, but it's not the perfect answer. It would be far easier just to try tie a size ten on, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have fished, I've caught quite a few, you know, big big fish in England on size 10s in fact I can think of at least another 350s that I've caught that, you that find that with photo fishing in general that it, it going down to that that sort of size or just more more, more specific to that lake I think it's float fishing in mm. general I don't do a lot they of float. really do see it yeah mm. I, re- I, I, I don't do a lot of float fishing it's it's. I'll do it when I know it's easy mm. you know when I when I you know or if there's a just reward. I'm not just doing to do it to catch carp, if you know what mm. I mean. You know, it's not my thing. Um, and uh, so yeah, so the that was me gone. But um, I, I, t- I think at the time I was still sp- well. I was. I think it was Grays. I was still sponsored by Grays, and uh, they'd got to do. Uh, they give the ta- the tasked. Um, DHP advanced carp mm. to to you know the ten things that that I always take fishing, right? Mm. And Rich Stewart, who we talked about earlier, you know, I, I'd met through through doing work for DHP, lovely lad, mm. lovely lad. Um, says to me, I've got to come and do this with you. Da, da, da. You know, I go, oh, I'd also go and do it. If it be, I've always been inside, if I'm committed to something. I'm going to commit to it. It's not for any other. You know, I never did any of my sponsorships for any real gain. You know, because I didn't need it. Um, and uh, so he says, "You know, when can we do it?" I'm thinking. I'm looking at my diary. I'm thinking, "God, I, has it got to be this week?" You know, yeah, really. And I says, "I'll tell you what. I'll go to Maxi Monday night, and I'll see you there Tuesday morning." So. Um, he says, yep, yeah, fair enough. So come Monday, there's no way I were getting away from work. Not in a, not in a, not, I didn't go to prayer. So I shot down on the Tuesday, arrived at Maxi probably 15 minutes before Rich did, chucked my gear up on, on Caravan Point. You know, I said, that's it. I've, and I'd got all the stuff. I, one thing I'd remembered to get all the stuff that I needed for for that for that little piece that we did, and uh, so we did all the all the usual stuff. And I says, uh, and I said to him, I says, if I'm going to catch anything today, it'll be out at this bay here, this side, because they're coming in out all the time. And I put a rod in there, and we, you know, I'd packed most of the stuff away, and we were ready for going. In fact, it's, the last thing we did was the waders, the, the, the and so I still got them on, and. Uh, Buzz it shot off, and I says, "Oh, I says, come on, I says, you're going to see a fish." So, I hits this fish. This fish is heading towards brambles on the far side, and it and I, and I tried to slow it down. On I think at that time I can't remember which reels they were. And it burnt my finger. Did it? Yeah. yeah. And I thought, this is not. This is angry, but I eventually stopped it. And when it rolled over, in about well, 
<laughs> he stood upright in probably about two foot of water. I knew exactly which fish it were. <laughs> they only got to see its tail <laughs> and it's uh, and the uh, you know and the linear. So uh, I gets it back and I said to. I said to, to <laughs> Rich, what he wanted there, didn't uh, he? Yeah, I said to Rich, I says, You're going to see something here that you, we, you didn't. Anyway, landed it. And um, I mean, that particular time, we did wait because there was somebody there, you know, yeah. that was, I think it was 51, 12. And I, I swore him to see, you're not using that. I swore, and he, true to his words, he it never, never went out. Nope. True to his words. That's why he'll always have my respect. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Did you uh, catch any more for him that day? No, because that were it. I had to go home then, because it was a normal day. <laughs> and he did, and, uh, and it was, uh, you know, he didn't say a lot. <laughs> I bet he didn't. No, he didn't say I bet a lot. He was absolutely gutted, wasn't and, he? Uh, uh, and, and I was, uh, I, 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 when I put it back, I says, you know, I said to him, I said, that can't go anywhere. I says, well, hey, they don't, they, they weren't that happy about me catching it second time. Coming down, having not been here for, oh, I should have mentioned this, I hadn't been there for two years. Right. Coming down for a day session, <laughs> out of the blue, two years later, and catching it again, yeah, it was a, was a bit... Uh, and and Rich it, it, was, it, was, it was out of order. I can even now know it were out of order. Wow. In fact, I think at the time, I think Jason Haywood, who we've got doing next, mm. I think he was on the lake at the time and uh, yeah I think he was I think he, you know, he'd, he'd got membership at the time right yeah. right oh my god <laughs> so but, that, but, but Rich never he never pushed that then he understood straight away that, yeah yeah but yeah you've met him he's a gentleman yeah and he's got a lot of respect for people he's got respect for he obviously had for me so. yeah yeah it was he never asked to use it anywhere he'd never he always sent me because I never took a photo of it Oh, and I thought, well, I've got a professional photographer here. Yeah. Why do I need to take a photo of it? You know, and he, he sent me all the pictures, and they were brilliant, brilliant. In fact, I've got one on my study that he took. Oh, it's, wow. it's the one that I'm, I've stood in the water, you know, classic, you know, shot, shot in, you know, yeah. Oh, good on Rich. Mm. Is that the only fish you, I mean, did you double up on many fish in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I caught. I caught. I probably, without checking it, I probably caught. I mean, I had. I mean, we've we've gone over a lot of captures, but I know when I'd finished, because obviously I only fished really from from September to August, nearly a year. The first few months on in the caravan, and then the, the latter half a few months as a, as a member of the syndicate. I know I'd identified twenty nine different fish over twenty pound then, and there was. I think it was about six thirties at the time, plus the forty, you know, and and I'd I'd doubled up on quite a few, mm. and I mean when I used to go float fishing, I could tell which ones there were. So you know, I, and I always tried to catch the ones that I didn't know. There's, there was a few in there I never did catch. What you know? what a lovely period that yeah. was fishing there. It was, and that was um, that was a county record uh, at the time. I know it was the biggest linear in the country. I don't know whether it is now. Um, I don't. Mm. That's putting it out there, isn't it? That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. I mean, at that, I mean, you've got to go back. It's two thousand. I know for a fact there's lakes not far away from from that now has actually produced bigger fish. One just basically go out the gate, drive a mile, um, right, <laughs> turn turn left, go over a bridge, and people will be writing this down. Dave. And it, yeah, and it's there. I think most people probably most, know which pe lake. most people know which one it is. Mm. You know, and I mean that's done. Done. I think I think that, that lake's done fish to fifty four, um, mm. and I, and one of the so so I, I mean we've always had a debate about which which county actually is in because it's right on the border on the Cambridgeshire Lincolnshire border. I I I'd say it was in Lincolnshire because the border sign is is down the road and a little bit that way, but it's whether the boundary comes right. uh, you know, So I don't know whether it was Lincolnshire or, or Cambridge, but it's right on the border. I mean, mm. I mean, I mean that area is the only area I know where you could easily catch uh, multiple fish from f several counties in the same day, because <laughs> they're that close to each other. You know, you've got, you've got Cambridge, Lincolnshire, Northamptonshire, 
Leicestershire and if you want to I always because I once lived there I always class Rutland still as a county because I once lived in Rutland mm. Rutland all in a basically you, you go down you went ra- wrong way off A1 you find yourself in another county so um so Lincolnshire, it, it it would be the record, do you think? Um, uh, Cambridgeshire's there's yeah. That, Cambridge, there's Cambridge, Cambridge, that yeah, Cambridge at the time. It, it, I, I doubt it. Uh, I can't think of something, but there will be something in there. Lincolnshire, possibly. Mm. Yeah. And, I'm trying to um, think. Not now, because I know this. I mean, I know there's few. There's several waters in around Lincoln that's done 50 pound plus fish. I don't know whether they've done a, I, I mean that fish has, has been has since been caught because don't be I'm talking 2006. We're talking what's that 15 years ago. It's been out as high as 58. Mm. You know. Mm. Um but I'll tell you one remarkable thing about that fish mm. besides the fact it probably spawned and was was born in there, grew in there. Out of all the fish that I fish for, big fish, from 98 to 2011, it's the only one alive. Mm. That's that's that says a lot. Mm. You know, all the rest are all dead. You know, and I think the reason that fish is still alive is because it's not being pursued to death mm. which i think you know it's if you know what i mean and it's had it had a lot of things controlled on it is it still being fished a lot now oh ah, yeah 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 i mean it's um i mean it's by a very you know a, a, a little group that yeah that, that you know but yeah it's still in fact yeah. if anything now it's probably sees more pressure yeah. than it ever did but yeah as well as that you've um well you've caught the yorkshire record as well yeah yeah, that was 2000 and, yeah, I can't remember, I think. 2003, I think. It was 2003. I, I messed around qu- for quite a few years with that fish. Um, mainly because, and it would, I, I, I've, got to give, I've got to give my wife her due. The only reason I caught that fish was she, I've said talk sense into me, it was more like shouted sense. <laughs> That's more, 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 more the part. And I, I, I was trying to do too many things at once. I was trying to fish this lake for this fish. And I think the other, a lot of people will know the story of Sally Walsh's dam that fished it. But it got, it, it's, it's, it was quite remarkable, really. It, the lake was positioned between um, Wakefield. And Pontefract in a in a you know in an in, in well an industrial area. In fact, it was originally known as the Turkey Farms. The reason it became known as Sally Walsh's Dam was because apparently Sally Walsh um, drowned herself uh, after a lover's tiff oh, right. in the in the, mm. in the dam. Mm. How would whether that's there's any truth in that or whatever, but it made made good ghost stories. <laughs> um, so. I mean, uh, it, it got polluted, but through a, a pure accident dealing with a fire further further up the valley, where and it was a yogurt factory that caught on fire, and the fire service ended up um, basically washing all the yogurt and everything into the river went that fed the dam. It's a little bit like Maxi then, a little bit with the p- pollution. <laughs> yeah, very much yeah. so. Yeah, and that uh, that got the, everything got wiped out. You know, they had to do massive clean-up operation because, I mean, you, if you talk to people that were around, then even the, even kill the eels that were in there, you know. So I mean, it was uh, it was a bit devastating for. But I am. These are all stories that I was told afterwards because I'm not even sure what date it happened. Um, but the EA, you know, and it probably would have been Yorkshire Water then anyway. The Yorkshire Water. Um, must have been monitoring it and they, they, they put a few fish into it, a few perch and stuff, and they survived. And then the owner that uh, restocked it and he put, he put, he put some carp in it. Uh, I understand the carp came from Ken Ryder um, and were probably of Croat descent. 
but they weren't put in very big. And I mean, I've never had, you know, carp. If people want to start arguing about heritage of carp, which I've gone down so many routes and found every one that most people's tell me is wrong. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I now I'd rather just, all right, you believe what you want to believe. I've done the research, um, and they did really well. You know, slow, and it weren't long before I started hearing little stories about oh, it's done a thirty pound common, and you might think now, what th what's you know that's not special. Trust me, in Yorkshire, in that's a bit late nineties. Mm. In late nineties, mm. was prick people's ears up, and uh, then two years later, when one of the I was fishing at Three Lakes in Selby. Um, one of the lads there tells, says, "You know that common in Sally Walsh?" He says, "Yeah, I've heard about it." He says, he "says Brendan Moss has just caught it. It were April." has just caught it at Scrape of 40. I said, you're joking. You know, I mean, and I think that was probably the first ever genuine 40 pound carp to be caught in in um, in Yorkshire. So I messed around fishing at, at Three Lakes. It were, it were convenient Three Lakes at the time because I was fishing also a lake in Norfolk, which is, I think we'll probably talk about later. Um, and it was close to work. At that time, I I was looking after two pits in the Selby area, Rickall and Whitemore, uh, which were a stone's throw. Mm. So I could do overnight as I could drop in to see when it when it was my rotor right week. And the fish fishing was pretty good. You know, it was, you know, it, it filled a it filled a void when I, if I couldn't get to to Norfolk. Um, and I'm sat there thinking, well, rather than mess about here. I might as well go over there. It's that. It's not far away. So did 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 uh, did did um, did that information get around quite quickly then? That um, no, no, it didn't because it was, it was really before social media and and yeah, I got I had a mobile phone in nineteen ninety, you know, because I had to have one. Or was, no, sorry, it was eighty nine, I think. Yeah, I mean, because I had to have one, and so I would. I do, you know, not but not everybody did, because a they were sodding sort of expensive, and b oh, they were like bricks as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's it's like, um, the, the I think people didn't see them as essential. In reality, they're probably not. But you know, you know, well, they are not. They aren't really because I can lose mine for weeks, and <laughs> no, don't worry me. But it worries everybody else, um, and. So you, you didn't yeah. get you had to see people, and you had to meet people to find stuff out, and uh, so I thought I'll go over and have a look. So I went over and had a look, and it's uh, I got the, I got a completely different view of what I was expecting, and I thought well, it's not picturesque, but it's not bad. You know, it's not you know car park's not too far away from <laughs> where you're fishing. You know, it's not this. You because know, I used to have to look at stuff like that. Because I used to do a lot of overnighters, and I used to have to, I, I, I you know, had to get from usually uh, wherever I was fishing at half past six to to being washed, sorted, looking bright-eyed, and all the rest of it by about latest half eight. You know. So how many how many nights would you do like that? I mean, would you you're fishing every uh, week? And yeah, yeah, I do, I do. I do it depends. I mean, I, I, I have done as many as bloody four. T trust me, it's a killer. Mm. It's a killer. You remind I, me of Julian a little bit. Julian Well, Clendiff well, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, be honest with you, Julian, he did it for the self same reasons as we did. I did. It, it allowed him. It allowed him to have a a home life with his partner at the weekend, but fish during the week and work. Mm. So I mean. Same same way, you know. I you know I had limited time, so I had to grab time, which you should be in sleep, really. But you know, talking so, of talking of Julian and you know Free Lakes as well. Did, didn't you mention that there was a fish that they thought had broken the uh, the Yorkshire yeah. record, which was Miss Wade? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this could cause some arguments, but you know, I have have a firm belief when when the first forty pounder came out of three lakes it didn't weigh 40 pound I, I do believe 
it was done in, in perfect innocence because after or should I say a few weeks before it came out at £40 it had been caught at 37 12 a few weeks after it had been caught it was now £40 in a few ounces it's the week the two weeks two weeks after it had been caught and the same guy that caught it at 37 12 caught it again at I think 37 12 yeah, hmm. it's and, telling oh, you something, isn't it? Yeah, and and uh, and I'll tell you what. Tell you the thing that got me is they said, "Oh, it's spawning." Well, again, they obviously knew nothing about how carp build up spawn, or, or even retention of water or anything like that. It doesn't happen that quick, you know, and it doesn't change that quick, and it never happened ever again. In fact, for the next, how long do I don't know how long that fish. Uh, survived after that ca ca after that year but I, I bet it was another 10 12 years mm. it never got over like a, it used to peak in october at round about th th between 38 and we think 39. it was lucy don't we the yeah, one yeah lucy 38 and 39 um but most at summer it could be as low as 36 37 in fact the it's, it's mate the female i caught didn't even know it were it because of the weight right you know, you know and the weight it was at 29 29 something not recognized uh, it's not it's not mm. female it's always a 30. all oh, right then, then you look yeah, it is so people are misweighing fish aren't they well yeah and i mean it's i don't think it happens now like it used to be unless it's this 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 problem that i found in, i've seen i've seen this quite a lot yeah what well, yeah. you know because the first time i actually helped somebody weigh a fish at three lakes i watched what he did and when he picked the scales up cupped i says that's wrong is cupped is holding the, holding your hands underneath the, yeah, the, the bottom like of the that, scale bottom yeah. of the scales and i've tried I, it doesn't it, it doesn't affect digital scales in the same way as it affects spring balance scales and certainly all the early reuben eatons if you did that you can you, you can depending on what you're weighing it can be anywhere between two pound and and six pound heavier because it's you know it, it, it and and it's because it's meant that's why they put that little hook on top that's you know the the scales are designed to be held so you've got its supporting point is is on the same axes as the pulling point centered you know, centered you know and anyway after that it was amazing that my weights at as fish at three lakes started to make a lot more sense yeah because i couldn't understand why everybody was catching you know <laughs> fish between 25 and 29 when all i were catching fish was between 21 and 25. i hope a lot of people listen to this because yeah. you still see it now and actually you see some pretty experienced anglers doing that as well yeah. um it's convenient to hold them like that isn't it i, I wonder whether some people actually probably know this anyway <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but um I, yeah. yeah getting back to the uh yeah, we were we was we was we, we was we were on to Sally Walsh's dam, weren't we? Mm. So um, I started doing overnighters, but I weren't take it for for quite a few years. I didn't take it seriously because um, I just thought I'll be honest with you. I thought this is easy. It's a dam. It's got no weed. It's got none of this, and it's easy. First first few trips that I fished it, there was they tell you know there were, there were I caught fish, you know I caught fish, you know. Quite what I would con consider easily, but as opposed to now watching people around me were struggling like mad, so I thought this is just going to happen. Well, just shows you should never, you should never count your chickens because I think the first time I went on there was it, it would properly would be ninety nine, but in two thousand and one I never went at all um, due to my wife deciding to have a child so you know that was that was written off and the following year 2002 was a bit iddledy piggledy so come 2003 i decided that i was gonna you know i was gonna go back to norfolk da, 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 da. and by this time this fish is no longer scraper 40 this fish is an upper 40 mm. you know in fact um you know it had been out before 
it been out at sort of I think it was about 40, 48, 12, something like that. So which was an enormous mm. fish for Yorkshire, absolutely enormous. And uh, so you know, you know, I'm fishing. I'm back on it on two thousand and three, but the wife said to me. When are you going to catch this? Because I've gone on about it a bit. She says, when are you going to catch this fish? I says, oh, you know. She said, and then she just said, you started in 1999. <laughs> and I says, oh, yeah, I know I did. And she says, and I, even I know from your conversations I've heard you on the phone, there's some of the fish, and there was two fish I caught 12 times between them. You know, it's like, you know, you know she says, you'll never catch it <laughs> unless you stop going to Norfolk. And I thought, yes, yeah, she's right. There was nothing in Norfolk then that was, other than that I enjoyed it. Yeah. There was nothing sending me back for any particular mm. reason. So I thought, that's it. I'm going to concentrate on, on, on Sally's to catch it. Well, the first, and it, 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 had, it had gone missing for a little while as well. It started to get quite hard to catch. Anyway, I don't think it had been out for nearly a year. And um, I was up top end and suddenly I saw this a lad I know quite well, Pete Johnson, another nice guy, fishing on on the long long platform playing a fish. And um, next thing I know is I see his mate run round, which is so he'd obviously he was in the next swim, which again was a smaller platform. He's that long platform, you can see him. He's shouting him over, so he's netted this fish, and and. Uh, you know, the, it, one of them phoned me. Says, "Oh, he's caught Sally. You're going to come round." So I came round and we weighed it. I think it was forty-nine one, something like that. And I, I thought to myself, "That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's now it. for a while. Yeah, that's it for a while." And uh, <laughs> I, I, so I mean, I, I waited. I, I did the dignified wait. I found out what we were doing that night, and he says, "Oh, stopping out because we used to." order a few beers and a pizza and all have a bit of a you know so I did so I, when I went home because that was yeah it was Saturday unusual Saturday I went home Sunday and of course I said I think I'm back I'm going to Norfolk next weekend if I'm if I'm going for, well it would be the weekend after I'm going to Norfolk and she says why I says, well, it's been out it's not going to come out again she says how do you know well I don't and, and you, you, you probably know as well as me it often happens. Mm. Got two catches very mm. close to each other. But I weren't convinced. I don't have that sort of look. And uh, he, anyway, come the, the following weekend, it was one because I could only go full weekends probably every other weekend. So the only chance I got to go fishing was Sunday night. I thought well, I might as well go. I might as well go to Sally's. You know what's what's the you know what's the, I might as well go. You know, there were a couple of carp in there I'd never caught, never did. But um, uh, when I got to car park, um, it was really busy for Sunday night. In fact, there were two swims left on Lake. There was a swim called the Bog, which was at the far end, that you were sort of cut off a little bit. And there was um, Cyanide Bank, which was a stretch that was this, the straight bit from, from the damn wall. They called it cyanide bank because everybody avoided it like cyanide. Actually, it wasn't true. You could catch, you know, I caught plenty of fish damn wall and on cyanide bank at the right time, but they used to call it that. And the lad that was stood with me in the car park, Dean, who was one of the maxi anglers now, but well, me and Dean had sort of a little bits of, you know, we've crossed paths. Yeah, I've known him a long time, long, long time. We stood in carpet. He says, where do you fancy going? I said, well, there's only two places, Dean. It's Bog or Cyanide Bank. And he says, well, there's been a few fish soon off Cyanide Bank. I said, well, you were here before me. I said, you you choose. Um, and he says, I'm going to, I'm going to Cyanide Bank. I said, fair enough, I'll go to Bog. If he did pick Bog, I'd have gone home. Because, you know, because I thought if I, the only chance I'd got of catching anything was up there with how many people were on Lake. Um, right, and so I goes up onto bog swim, and uh, it's a you, you're actually set up on a it's on a platform, right? Because you, you you do go across a bit of a bog to get right. to it, but you're on this platform mm. and you're set up on on this platform. Um, and about eight o'clock at night, it started to rain. Well, it, 
Evans opened. I mean, and I, I, yeah, we're really, really heavy, and it weren't stopping. So like like three hours of this torrential rain, I'm now looking because you could see underneath this platform where water level was on the platform. I thought this is coming up, and it did. Once the river went went mm. up, it used to flowing like mad. It used to kill the fishing, but also kick it in as well, depending on mm. what the weather was. Mm. And um, so I thought hey, it's it, it's not too bad. And I eventually fell asleep, and I got a phone call off of Pete who caught the the common the previous week. Said to you, "Are you all right?" And I, knowing what were happening, it's just because I can see here that the the water level's going up. I said, "I don't know." I'm like, "Bloody hell!" I said, <laughs> "I think I'm going to have to abandon ship." I look, I got up and looked round back. Me barra underwater. Right. All me, all me, you know, me, my hooking mats floating around it. What they call it, you know, this, this. There's nothing that, there was nothing there that didn't matter about being wet. But it was wet. I'm sort of thinking, well, shall I abandon ship or shall I just wait? You know, plus the fact I've got to go to work in the morning. So I'm sort of twiddling my thumbs and I'm watching, watching the you know, marks of water on, on, on the on the post that's on, that's on this platform. And I thought, is it dropping? I'll tell you what, I'll set my alarm for an hour and wake up and have a look. So I set my alarm, went to sleep. Well, I went, I looked up. Oh, it's dropping. <laughs> right. That's it, switched the alarm off. Overlaid, didn't I? Oh, about the only time I think I ever overlaid when I've been doing overnighters. Right. And I, I, I opened my eyes and I knew I'd overlaid just by looking how light it was. I know that feeling too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you then. Yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew. I thought, oh my God, you know, this is, this is, oh, this is proper overlaying. So I looked at me, I thought, oh, Jesus, I better phone work up. So I f phoned up work and got in touch with somebody and said, look, I'm not coming in today. It's now, you know, cancel my meetings, cancel this, cancel that. I said, and I, I would truthful I said I've overlaid are you fishing they all knew what I did <laughs> I couldn't hide it you know I said yeah I've, I've had friends do that and, uh, and, and and the birds are quacking away on the lake <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. yeah 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 so <laughs> yeah so I'm, yeah, so I'm uh, hiding it there no well, well I used to I mean I couldn't hide it when I was at Rickall well, well it didn't matter but because I, I used to put me I used to put I used to take me bivy out of my car and and Pitch it up outside my office. Yeah. So anybody that was coming in out of building, what's that? <laughs> oh, it's Dave's baby. You know, so it went, it went, it went, it went. You know, anybody that worked with me knew exactly what I was like. In fact, <laughs> I mean, they used to also like like to enjoy the successful part about it, and they all knew about Sally. All of them knew about it. Then you know, to the point where you know, they'd, we'd have meetings, and um, it went along. So have you caught it then? <laughs> and it was these are people that. All they do is play golf. So I mean, even they realise they get into it. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. So, so yeah. So the the I've overlaid. So I thought, well, this is nice because I very rarely, yeah, and I always knew best time to fish Sally's was always from about nine o'clock in the morning onwards to midday. But I used to never see them times. Mm. So it was nice to see them times, mm. and um, and I think it was about half nine. One of my bobbins went -da 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 -da, straight down. I thought, full of bream. Because, give you a, back, a bit of background, Sally's changed hands from the guy that stocked it to the people that now run it when I fish there. It's Barnsley and District Angling Club that, that, that run Sally's. Have you ever heard of the Barnsley Blacks? Mm. Well, it's the home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the home of the Barnsley Blacks. Mm. So they're not really that interested in cap, you know. <laughs> so they'd filled it up with bream. And it, I mean, it was really good course water well, can't get, get away from it I thought it's a it's a bream and, be, uh, and you know we don't rush do we when it's a bream just in case it's not <laughs> you know anyway it just lifted up and it lifted up just as slow as oh it's a bream and I picked the rod up <coughs> and it was I thought I should have flaming bream but, I, but I'll but i tell you now it did nothing that of the 50 or 60 other fish that I caught from that same swim did. Right. It did exactly the same. There was a little snag to to the mm. to the left that they all headed for. But you could easily stop them. I mean, the easiest way was to just jump in. Mm. Um, but it headed for that. I pressurised it. 
it then moved round and it went round the snag and it and it went into the bay that's that you, you you have to cross to get to this swim and it's not very deep this bay and I can see all this mud churning up which I thought well that's new and then it came back and it came right back underneath underneath my feet right in front of me and I just popped it and in it went and, yeah, and I looked I thought that's it you know done and dusted you know it was like you know and, uh, he, Do you see a pattern with this as well? Yeah, there seems to be a bit of fate with you, Dave, doesn't there? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I, I, well, I, I'll tell you something. I mean, uh, I'll, t I'll, t well, I'll finish this story. Yeah. I'll tell you something now. And um, so, it, it, and I've caught it. And it's a, it's roughly a week and two days since its last capture. Uh, I weighed it myself. And I thought, hmm. I need somebody to come and weigh this with me because it, it was a little bit heavier than it had been previously, but only a tiny margin. So Pete, who was there, I said to Pete, I've, I've got Sally here, you could have come round. And so he did and brought all the entourage. Bring some more scales. So the, anyway, weighed it. And we eventually uh, settled on a, a weight of 49.3, which was two ounces bigger than what Pete's were. And he was there. And he says, it is. I can't deny it. It is. I, I says, well, that's that. Yeah. yeah, it didn't really make no difference to me. If it had been forty nine twelve, I'd have been uh, thirty nine twelve. I'd have been. It's a massive fish for the area, though, wasn't it? Oh, it was phenomenal. There was you, nothing you, close to it. You were saying as well, Dave, that you don't necessarily think that the fish up in in Yorkshire. It's not necessarily down to um, climate or anything like that. It's uh, yeah, no, it's just the we we've always finished up with the dregs. You know, that's yeah. big, and it and and you know that's it because now we've got as like you say. I control, I've got my own lake, I control uh, the, I'm a fisheries officer for, for, for Bradford Angling Association, so I control the, the stock or stockings of them waters, and, as I, and it's something that takes a few years, but as I've started to control them and been very specific about where we get fish from and who we get them from, that club's never had as many big cat. It, 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 in the next five years, it'll probably have 40 pluses in at least three of its lakes, maybe even four. You know, so just uh, genetically, is, just 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 stronger carp, or yeah, yeah, you've just got. We aren't getting the dregs, like mm. I said, you know, because people see us as as a viable a viable business. You know, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know cast aspersions and on anybody that I've dealt with in the past but you know you you, you know they most fish most fish farmers know the best fish the moment they net the first leg and whether it's six pound or 16 which I've seen myself come from the same same pond from fish of the same age what happens to them does the 16 pounders become what they should be, C3, C4s, or do they become, mm. are you with me? Mm. So you end up, yeah, you could be really, you could end up getting a, a 16 pounder that is purported to be a C6, and actually is a C4, which is brilliant. That, give me them every day. Or you could end up with a C2 that actually is a C6. How do you know then? Is it? Is it just? You only, they don't, I've been privileged to be able to be there when people have let me watch them net the stock ponds and seen the massive. When you say to them, "Well, what's in this?" Well, they've been in here three years, and, you know, so that makes them, you know, C fours. You know, be fed, and you're seeing the massive difference between the top end and the bottom end. Just size, size. Yeah. It's phenomenal. You know, it's not even. It's not even fifty percent. It can be two, three hundred percent difference, which is a big difference. Now that carp that's that's up there, you know, growing like mad, you know, what's it going to do when it gets put in an environment that it can eat as much as it likes, what it likes? It's it's the same. You, know, that's why I would never anybody that sets up a, a carp water, I would never buy destocked fish, because ask yourself, why are they destocking them? Why don't they want them? Mm. Yeah, you because know, I've seen people make that mistake. Is it? I mean, is that is that absolute fact that anything that's been destocked, there's no 
real oh, no. future for no that, it so. isn't it isn't but there's other i mean some some of some of our um our EA people would be having kittens now because there's obviously other in, other implications involved in there. Permission to do it, disease control, you know, it, it, uh, there's lots more in, uh, in it. But yes, you could get a fish that's been in one lake that's been stunted for years, put it in your leg, sometimes and you'll release alive. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. But my own experience is, for for knowing what I know, people's got rid of. They've got rid of them not because they're yeah. going to grow well. The difference between that and fish farming, and you've got a fish farmer that knows the precise age of his fish, he knows how much he's fed him, and when he comes to net him and sees that massive difference between size wise, you know, you know, he knows straight away which is going to be the the premier stock. I mean, you talk to any fish farmer. And say what's the worst job you could do on this fish farm, and they'll tell you grading. It's you know, especially with the small ones, it's a, a nightmare. You know, it's it takes forever you know to do it because the smaller they are, the harder they're to grade initially. Because you know, if you get, I've now, I mean, I've got I've got this year's babies swimming around in my lake now, and they're about three inches long, and most of them will be about that size. And you put them side by side, there will be a bit of size variation, but it's very hard to see. But you give them three years down the line, and it's dead easy to see, because one will be three or four pound, or there could be a double. What about when they're, um, when, when they're fried? We were looking in the water the other week, actually, and there were thousands of fish swimming around in there. Mm. And there was one fish amongst them all, which was literally two or three times bigger than the rest. Do you think... Um, do you think there's a real future for that particular fish, or uh, do the others if it's tend a carp, to catch up? If yeah. it's a carp, if it's a carp, yes, because first thing it'll do if it grows faster than than its siblings, it'll start eating them. You know, they're they're they're, they're terrible cannibals when they're little. Yeah. You know, if you you get a load of small fry in a in a tank and watch, you know, you'll think, well, oh, they've disappeared. They haven't disappeared. They've been eaten. You know, I mean, carp are pretty pretty carnivorous at all age groups but very much so when they're small uh, so they're going to grow that fish if it's, it started eat, being able to eat its siblings is going to grow pretty quickly because obviously it's getting it's, it's, it's taking the nutrition from the fish it's taking a set of mouths away from whatever's in that tank with it you know it's not I mean, it's just that's just mathematics. That's just Need to get a net in there and get that one out, don't I? You yeah, see, well, you well I would, I would just leave it. I just, yeah. I just leave it because it'll, you know, uh, I mean, the survival rate this year should be reasonably good because, I mean, I can't, I can speak for North and England yeah. because we've had these sta- these really stable water temperatures for now for three months. You know, our fish have grown like mad. My problem is going to be doing what the bloody hell do I do with them all? Because I mean, if I have if I have them all survive this winter, I'm going to have. Do you have to, do you have problem with predation on your like cormorants or anything? No, no, I wouldn't even at one stage. I would have, I'd have been getting. Then now I wouldn't. If they came in, I'd let because I you know I've got three year classes of uh, of spawned on fish. You know I've got to I've got to be mindful sooner or later. I've got to manage this or so what's been happening. Since I started the fishery, will stop. Mm. You know, it's it, it's it's it can easily get become overstocked. You've got to be ruthless. You have, mm. you have, you have. Yeah. Mm. One other thing, you were talking. We were talking about county records and stuff like that. I mean, uh, you caught black eye as well, which uh, yeah, from yeah. Gloucestershire. When you said that, I was trying to think whether there's been a bigger fish caught in Gloucestershire. I mean, what other lakes are we talking about? I mean, Frampton uh, or something. I mean, or? Frampton's definitely. I'm sure it's done bigger fish. Yeah, 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 but. I couldn't have, not having a connection with it I, I don't know I mean it's Chad Chad Lake where you caught Black Eye from yeah, it yeah. kind of reminds me a little bit I've got like visions of that um, that Maxi Lake I, I guess Maxi was a little bit bigger than that oh but, yeah uh, yeah it was considerably bigger than than than, than uh, Chad tell you what Chad it, it, it was very similar size and whenever I was staring at water always reminded me of Redmire yeah because you know, Redmire is only tiny as well mm. Um, and uh, I mean, I'd fished there, you know, in between the syndicate, uh, f- you know, falling apart and Clive and Malcolm taking it over. So I, I enjoyed that little bit. 
Um, but yeah, I fished. I fished at Chad for a little while. I mean, it was a you know n- nice lake, and again, got some really nice fish in it. I mean, I mean, Black Eye was always you know proper character fish. You know, without a doubt, um, wasn't a a particularly a hard fish to catch, um, but an enjoyable time. I mean, it, lovely surroundings. Mm. I mean, it was you know you know it was just just a nice place and it did help the fact that you know there was one particularly big yeah, fish in there yeah. and uh, well uh, there was another 40 in yeah, as well yeah. yeah but dave and gail owned the lake i mean a lovely couple same sort of yeah yeah same sort of theme, theme yeah, with that yeah. yeah you said as well with um you know taking fish away you you thought that when black eye was in there there were more fish in the lake that yeah, it made yeah. that fish harder to catch well i mean when i first started fishing it David obviously got his he's got his fisheries management policy, you know, in his in his, and he decided, you know, in place, but he decided he was going to um destock, hoping that, you know, the other fish that were hovering around the same way would, would fill out a little bit. I always thought it was a bit of a mistake because Having fished there and I'd done a lot of stalking, the amount of times that I'd failed to catch black eye early doors because I, a bloody 25 pound common had shot in and took the bait before me, before it mm. saved it. Mm. So th- it, there was a, I think, I can't remember exactly how many fish I counted one day that were on surface. And this is after we took a few out. I think it was somewhere in the region about four mid foot 40 say 45 you know and it's a small lake so it was a lot of fish but but like but it kept it all in balance i think um but then we started i you know on dave's you know dave's wishes he says if you catch anything keep it i'll come and have a look at it and it might go in it because he's got he's got another lake literally two yards other side at bank at, yeah you know down the down the valley so yeah i mean i can't remember how many i i passed him for examination for him to, to move but there quite a few mm. and i mean i've eventually caught black eye you know, you know later on that year um and i mean it was it, it, it was it i thought it was the ideal time you know when it was you know that you're uh, going to its autumn weight at you know 54 so i was really chuffed i know it come out bigger years gone by but the following year he he he, uh, he dissolved the syndicate but he dissolved it now with only about i think about 25 26 fish in it well all them which was the fish that you you hope to catch i know but they just got battered which they would because you know they, they you you know, like that size, you, 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 if you're going to catch a carp, if it's when there's 45 in, it's, it's basically just mathematics. It's 45 to one. It's going to be black eye. Once you get down to 25, it's 25 to one. Mm. You know whether you know, whether it's periodical. It's it, you've increased your chances. I mean, if somebody had said to me, "What would you rather do?" In the hope of catching a specific big fish fish your water with 200 carp in with one big carp say 50 acres or fish a 200 acre lake with three carp in it give me the 200 ca- acre lake with three carp in it rather than the other <laughs> yeah because i mean it, it can be hard to stop catching the fish that you you don't want to catch than it is to catch the ones you do want to catch. Well, I mean, like St. Ives and places like that with those low stocks, at least when you get a bite, you've got, exactly. you've got a reasonable chance. Chance, yeah. yeah. You know, and it, and it did get back. It did, did it last very, very long after that few years? I think it probably three years. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, Dave, um, we're at that point in the show. Normally, this is at the start of the show when we ask for a gift. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Have you got anything nice for us? I have. Um, strangely, not so it's not actually directly to do with fishing it's more to do with a hobby that i have besides fishing i'll tell you what hold it up to that camera there well i'm gonna do don't worry okay um <laughs> and uh 
But what I want the listeners to take from this is the story and what it could mean if you applied it to the way you think. Because the way somebody thinks determines the success. That's the first thing I will say. Um, but the first one is, I'm going to hold it up. And it was given to me um, by my mother. And it was sadly uh, died on New Year's Eve 2017. Um, and I know she won't mind me you know, passing this on because it has, it has a lot more... The model's superfluous, to be honest with you. It's what it, she knew I would do when she gave me the model. Well, this ship here is the Bismarck. Anybody knows anything about the Bismarck? The Bismarck was the pride of the German Navy. Um, built around 1938, launched at Hamburg. The biggest battleship to ever be built and ever will be built. You know, phenomenal firepower. You know, it was built to scare everybody to bits. And to a degree it did. But what Mr. Hitler didn't understand that progress in the 21st, 20th century was f far quicker. So by the time this actually reached the blueprint, it actually was becoming obsolete. So that's the Bismarck. The second one is the HMS Hood, the pride of the British Navy at the same time. You know, phenomenal um, firepower, very outdated compared to the Bismarck, but still it's what the British Navy was relying on in 1939. On May the 4th, now somebody's going to probably correct this because I'm pulling it out of my head. On May the 4th, the, the Bismarck entered the North Atlantic, somewhere between um, Iceland and Greenland. Um, and it's, it was its first mission. And it was actually going to to basically attack the American Anglo convoys. Um, and it was the first, it, before they launched the U-boat attacks, this was what was going to destroy them all. And the British knew it. And so they dispatched the HUD and the Prince of Wales as it's, as it's, um, as another ship in the, its convoy. The Bismarck actually had the Prince Jurgen with it as well. So they were on a collision course, you know, and this battle between these two famous battleships was going to basically influence what happened for the remaining of the war, as the way the Germans saw it, the way we thought it. And they collided, like I say, round, round about, you know, like I said, North Atlantic, not far from Iceland. As soon as they became in, in range, the Bismarck opened its salvo of guns. 15 minutes of cross salvos, the HMS Hood was completely blown off the planet. Not a skerrick of it left. 1,500 men died on that ship, only three survivors. Luckily, the Prince of Wales, knowing full well that if it hung around in that area for much longer, it would follow the same fate. Well, you could imagine the Germans were ecstatic. We've got the biggest battleship, nothing can touch us, da 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 you know? And it, like I said, the Prince of Wales disappeared. The, the Naval Eye Command, obviously, <laughs> couldn't allow this ship to last any longer because of the, it, the threat it posed to the whole of the Navy, British Navy, which was supposed to be the greatest Navy, and if that had have, if that had have, have survived much longer, they would have just built a load more. And uh, so it was everything out after the Bismarck. They eventually, they lost it. They lost it. But what they didn't know at the time is the Bismarck had suffered a few hits from the hood, which had ruptured a few fuel tanks. And um, Admiral... Lieberman, 
who was in charge of the Bismarck, decided instead of to go back through the Bal Baltic and to port, thought it would be safer because that's what everybody had assumed they'd do, to be safer to go to Saint Nazaire, which is down in France, which you know, to be repaired. So the everybody now in the British Navy is looking for this ship and eventually they find it and they find it you and it wasn't found by by any other naval vessel it was followed by a spotter plane just remember this they've now changed tactics they're using spotter planes to to actually find the ships that they're then going to attack however some brilliant minded gentlemen in the navy realized if they dispatched a load more type you know, type one battleships after the bismarck they'd probably all end up exactly the same way as the hood the hood being the, you know the mm. the ultimate weapon was destroyed in 15 minutes you know so why don't we try this new method that a very very intelligent american general got demoted for de developing to colonel air power but air power launched from our new type of weapon aircraft carrier so happened the ark royal was in the southern ocean sorry it was in was, was off the off the south of of england so it was in, it was it was in striking distance so the dispatched a now name we'll all be familiar with the ark royal to go in pursuit while the prince of wales and I can't remember the. I, I should really know this. Two other battleships, you on the tail, because they had to stop. They didn't want this, the Bismarck, to to get into waters that it could be defended both by their air power and more submarines. So they needed to destroy it in a, a in a set place, and the time was ticking. Luckily, they'd found it, so they now were trailing it. They managed to intercept a few a few um, communiques that were keeping it keeping it virtually on course. They also now knew that it was, you know, it had been damaged. So once Ark Royal got within about 120 miles of the Bismarck, they set off our very early planes that were that flew off the uh, aircraft with the, were basically glorified Tiger Moths with big torpedoes onto them. In reality, every hit, every every torpedo hit its target. Mm. The Bismarck had got no defence from the air because you never get attacked by the air. This is this is about I think, a way of thinking. You know, they'd forgotten. They'd forgotten that basic fact. Yet to us, it might seem so. So everyone, they didn't destroy it, but they disabled it, and it was quite, quite, you know, it was quite obvious when they were plotting it it couldn't steer it could only i'm certain it was right it could only go right it would end up going in a big circle because they'd smashed the rudder mm. off with the torpedoes once that was happening sitting duck the rest of our battle fleet moved in bombed it to bits you know another loss of two thousand lives but mm. there was a hundred and four nineteen germans survived you know, the um, the sinking of the Bismarck. So they were around to tell her, you know, because the, there's always two sides to every story, to tell the German side as opposed to the Hood side, there was only three. Now you say to yourself, well, what's the, what's the relevance of that got to do with fishing? Just think about it. What went in to them decisions? You know, somebody changed something from the norm. They'd never, ever attacked uh, you know, not the greatest battleship that ever sailed the sea. They'd never believed attacking it with, with little canvas-made aeroplanes with torpedoes. They'd never done it, but somebody thought, "We'll try that," and that's a lot to do with how it's about being successful in fishing. Is that we have to sometimes come out of his comfort zone, and sometimes it's because we pushed into it, or sometimes because we don't, you know, we don't want to. There'll always be successful anglers, but you've always got to ask yourself, 
why are the most successful successful and it's because most of them think differently mm. to the rest of us mm. you know and that's something you've got to get your head around mm. you know you get to you can be taught you can be taught how to tie a rig up you can be taught how to cast well you can even be taught how to hunt fish because you know i always class myself as a hunter you know you, you, you can you can be taught all them things but it'll make you no different to the person that's taught you so to be that bit special you've got to start thinking for yourself and they'll be you know, again and not be scared you know because i think a lot of people are scared to try stuff because it's that you know, it's that it's not it's not the norm you know uh, also being when you do try stuff make sure that you don't injure yourself or the fish <laughs> when you try it that that's that you know all these things have to be way up mm. but that's what i brought them in for and it's all about how people think and changes and then we know all the people in fishing that's made the real major impact on 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 carp fishing i mean i've been around long enough to to know for from basically the 50s to the mid 70s there were hardly any change you know it, you know it was very slow lack of communication didn't open people's minds up so things weren't developed once lenny and kevin invented the hair that changed the way we all thought because they thought differently and i can add people's names to that you know the bait people you know like fred wilton you know rod and the rest of them you know they were the ones that thought out of the box and, and pursued things and that's what I, if anybody takes anything away from this what they're going to really you know remember you can think for yourself yeah exactly mm. um that's probably the uh say, the deepest the explanation for a I gift we've had but no i yeah. mean it, it it makes um it makes sense sad story as well that isn't it mm. just getting back to that mm. yeah well, the reason I, I, I didn't explain, it, I know why my mum bought me. Mm. She bought me because I used to say, she used to say, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for birthday? And because I'll I'll be to war, she get me a, any book about, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's First or Second World War, any book can be autobiography, it can be strategic, it can be anything. Get me a book. And she realised that I used to spend hours yeah. learning the facts and stuff from. So when them, them turned up, I'm certain. She knew I knew about uh, that. I knew about HMS Hood, and I knew about Bismarck. Let's face it. This is going to lead into another thing. I thought everybody would know what Bismarck was. You know, it's, it's a, you know, it was named after Otto von Bismarck, which was one of the German leaders just leading up to the Second World War. But that's another story. So, but as a result of them two models, she knew that I would have to know everything about them. Mm. You know, and I did, and I could have sit here and bore you to death about the, you know, how many how many men's in that gun, you know, how it works, where's its magazine loaded from, and she knew that, and it kept me it kept me entertained for hours and hours and hours. Didn't you say to me as well that there was a you know there was a period in your early fishing life um, when you were a match angler, so you you had some pretty big influences. There were some there were some pretty well known, very good anglers oh, yeah. around you. So was there was there, was there a point where you got to a certain position where you thought right you know now I can go and start thinking for myself more yeah oh yeah definitely I mean it was when I realized that that um I realized bait made such a difference and how it's presented but you know and it was that bit I concentrate more my angling has been concentrated concentrated more towards the bait I'm using because even in even the match fishing days I can remember being in the on the on the with them Midsummer, you know, and there's a bit of pull on the water, and I'm, I, I managed to fish, fish a, a stick float, and you're trotting down, you're knocking out little ropes this big. You then change from that maggot to emp and tears. And you might have a little bit before you get going, but suddenly the quality of the fish that you start catching are four or five ounces bigger. You know, and the, all you've done is. You, you're trotting the same straights, just to change the bait. Do you, do you understand why they've reacted to those changes, or is it just making a change? I think, uh, for a start, I think it's it, it's what's more appealing to them specific particular fish at that point in time. Carp fishing is not quite as simple. You know, I have seen it as simple as that. I'll always, you know, you go back to when I first started, and I told you about cheese. But, you know, but when we went from cheese to lunch, mate. Oh dear, that was a completely 
different. You know, we were getting, we started to get runs off proper carp. You know, lost a lot, but we got proper runs. Of, but within a year, I learned a little bit about pace baits and things. And uh, a one of my mates had come up with this with this paste, and I'd I'd actually used a, um, an additive to the paste that would come up. It were bread dough, basically. Mm. But if you you needed this, it was a, a um, like a patty into it. God, it was phenomenal. You know, the, 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 it, you know, instead of having to sit there all night for one bite, you know, if you were lucky, you could go for a day and get four or five. Was it the pate or the paste uh, or the bread that was? It was the pay. It was the pate that because yeah. that, that, doing the bread paste on its own didn't give you any. But as soon as you mix the pate in with it, it was after it, the, it were it. You know, the, and what was fun, really weird is this. Now some of those, these, this lake was the middle lake of three. Most of the things that worked in that lake didn't work in that, which I never. That's I still happen. don't, still haven't worked that one out, but you could, I mean, as we developed various things, as tried new things, I, I, one of the, I mean, I've never believed kidney beans to be a very good bait, but in that middle lake, if you use kidney beans, you could, they were like, they were almost, you'd get fed up of catching them, and yet you could, if somebody just sat either side of you with something completely different, you know, either even a boilie, you know, later on, the kidney beans would still outcatch. But think, yeah, they uh, never could catch a single fish on kidney beans at bottom one. Do you think they're following, uh, do you think fish follow habits of other fish then? That one, once once one starts feeding on something, the rest of them uh, follow? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's that. I've seen it stalking many, many times. Because, I mean, the easiest way to catch target fish is if you can go stalking. And you just got to sit on your hands until that, moment arrives that you can got a fair chance of catching the one you, you want to catch because I've I've watched carp when you know, in more than one water come in they've had a look sodded off and they've come back a little bit later pecked a few you know they picked a few up and then gone again and then they come back it's not long before another one's with it and, it, and, I've, and I've seen it where it's built up from one fish to that many fish coming and going, it were hard to keep a, a count on what they were. In fact, there was one stage I thought, I thought, I kept seeing boilies fall out, and they were falling out. They weren't being spit out, they were falling out. But I thought, why are they spitting them out? Until one levelled up so I could see it perfectly. And he got that many boilies in his <laughs> mouth, it couldn't hold any more. Yeah. And they used to, and they, 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 they all swam off, and I think they used to, I think it's, it's something that when a carp's got that much food, it goes off to crunch it all up and pass it by uninterrupted and then come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hard to see that behaviour everywhere because if you... I mean, one of the things that... And I mean, it, I, I, I remember the first few um, Corder Underwater videos. I mean, they were phenomenal entertainment value. You know, unbelievable. And it... And it taught us a lot of things, but I'd have loved to see one made that they could only pick up twenty mil boilies, mm. no pellets, no hemp, no nothing, just twenty two mil boilies, because I think if that was if if they'd have done that, we'd have seen a completely different behaviour. What do you think we would have seen? We'd have seen fish not not staying in the area for long periods, picking up as many boilies as they could and disappearing. And, and, and you know, more of, more of, because think about it. If they can pick up pellets and hemp, they can stack a load of that stuff in the mouths. It takes them a long time to fill the mouths up. You know, you get a 30 pound car. How long is that going to take? Mm. You know, especially if they're not in dense patches. Yet you get, you know, half a kilo of 22 mil boilies. It's going to fill them. Do you think in a feeding, a catching situation that they're, that the fish moving in and out quickly would make them easier or harder to catch? Easier. Yeah. Yeah, because the other thing is they only come in, you know, if you don't hook them first time they come, they're only coming back for one thing. They're coming back because they want some more. And then well, you, you think the longer that a fish is actually hanging over a baited area for potentially as well, the, the more likely it is to know that they are being fished for? It is, but 
you get to a point where where I think their own greed and competi- competitiveness tricks, f- f- tricks them. Yeah, it's not like I mean, I mean uh, amount of times I've watched fi- fish in lakes that I've had you know feeding on hemp, and I know they're feeding on hemp. And I can't get a bloody pot, a bite that I can see is a bite. Yeah, we've all seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's because of the way that they feed. Mm. As opposed to if you'd have fed just boilies, they they do tend to, you know, pick as much as up as they can. Because let's face it, what they're going to do when the mouths are full? They're either going to, you know, um, and they've got to hold them in there until they can pass them. And I think they can't do everything at once. So they, they hold them up, pass, you know, go off. Because the other thing, if one drops out, when they're somewhere else, they can pick it back up again. But they're dropping it out where they know that the, the you know, the mates are there. And, now, and and a bit like I said before, who's telling them other fish that there's food? And I think that's the thing. You know, it's not a not a communication that I think we can fully understand. But it must give off smells and traces and all the things that we can't that another fish is homed in on. You know, just like. Just like when you see bait balls, out you know, and tuna and 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 marlin feeding on them, I mean they all follow. Mm-hmm. I mean when you get a bait ball fetched at surface, and it could be by dolphins, it could be by uh, you know killer whales. There's not long before there's something else joined in it. How does they you know what's the communication there? There's something that's telling them that that's where there's food. I mean I've done a bit of big game fishing, and the first thing you do is you get as high as possible and look for the gulls. Because, I mean, the gulls are what, you know, you get a good diving pod of gulls, yeah. flock of gulls, mm. it's worth straight away, come on, skip her out there. And mm. the amount of times I've, I've, I've caught fish, um, in fact, I don't think I've ever not, not not necessarily caught the ones you want, but you've caught something that's also feeding on the, the fish that the, that the other animals, and, you know, and once it's all dispersed. So you think the secret is to, to get fish coming in and out of the swim and bring in, bring in their I, mates I, back I, with I, them. I think we ought to doubt it, and I think it happens a hell of a lot. I so, think, so mm. what about an underwater then? So, if uh, if 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 Dave was, um, if I was going to do it, I, I, I would. So, I, in that scenario that they were in, how yeah. would you have? Um, how would you have approached that? Would you would you put a lot of bait in? I'd put loads of bait in. How how much? Uh, depends what I was fishing for. How big? Because you bait up to size. So, so St John's twenty pounders, thirty pounders. We're St. John's, you've got to remember. Linear fisheries? Never been there, never will. So, <laughs> I, 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 but yeah, if there were, I mean, I would never fish for fish that size, to be honest with you. So, yeah, you've got, you got a reasonably heavily stocked venue. A venue. With, with, with an I'd average probably, weight I, of about £25. Uh, and this is a lot of them, you know, and you, Hundreds, you, bet, yeah. and you just want to catch carp. Mm. I put 10 kilo or 18 millers in, mm. and then to start off with, you know, but I mean, I, I don't. I don't do that sort of fishing anymore, mm. but that's what I would do. I know me, the fishing I do now, which I've really done for the last few years, I'm fishing for what I consider, you know, they are the biggest fish, biggest Cyprinus carpio in the world. You know, uh, you know, they, they all come from that same place, um, and and that's, you know, what I'm going to do. Don't don't get me wrong. I can get as much pleasure out of catching small carp, but it has to be in in certain places on my terms. I could never go to a commercial fishery and do it. Mm. You know, I've got a few very, very um, picturesque, very tranquil lakes that that you know might have a couple of low thirties in. I could be happy fishing them for the rest of my life, you know, because of you know the into one made swim. Most you know, every year we have to cut his way through to even get to to thing. It's fenced, luckily. So, you know, it, there is, you know, I'm not sizes to that extent. But if I'm going to fish a commercial venue, I'll go and fish for the biggest fish in the world. Simple as that. You know, if you're going to do it, you? do it properly. Yeah, if you why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I've always found it surprising. Uh, you know, like you know, especially recently that I can go to a lake with. I've never caught an English fifty-pound carp, so you, I, you know, so it's always exciting to be able to fish a venue where potentially yeah, you yeah. can catch your 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 English personal best. But actually, recently going to to venues with carp nowhere near that size in it, and just how quickly you can just adapt. 
mm. to that, you know. So, mm. so when you're hooking a 20 pounder, it suddenly feels like you've hooked a 40 pounder, or you know. But yeah, I, 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 know, I know what you mean. And what about, I mean, have you got a, you're quite well known for, for, for boilies, I mean, big fish mix and stuff like that. But I mean, is, is, are you predominantly a boily angler? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's very rare that I all I, times of the year, yeah. You know, I just vary. I just, you know, I vary usually the boiling time of the bait I use. I mean, the bait I use now is without a doubt. I've never caught as many big carp on it. it you know, it outstrips anything that I've ever put because I put it together. It outstrips anything that I've ever used before. It's just, it's, it's, it's almost unfair. I'd say. Oh, it seems right, to where, be. Where can we order some of this? It's, from, it's it almost. I mean, it's been. It's out there. Anybody can find it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's. It, you know, it, if the carp are there, and the carp, you put the bait in a place where them carp will feed, you'll catch them. You know, I've just, you know, I've, I, I mean, the last, last five six years, is it? You know, it's probably a bit more because I'll keep forgetting we've lost a year with, we've not actually mentioned the dreaded COVID, but we lost a year. But it's the last, you know, I've used the exact same bait, the exact same approach on a multiple type of water types you know the only common thing between them all is they all contain very big carp you know what and to me a very big carp is an 80 plus you know so i mean and i've caught a lot so i mean i must there must be something right so so, so is, is this a completely new bait or no. is it so you can isolate it down to maybe certain ingredients uh, well, that made I a say, difference i say it's quite it is Ah, we're gonna. Have you got? Have you got a few? Because I mean, if you set me off on bait, <laughs> you're gonna, gonna be here a long time. Right. I mean, go back to the early days of of, of bait. My, I start, I made my first boil in 1977, um, and it it was made from ingredients best I could get at the time. Boots health food shops and I managed to find some reasonable you know protein content baits uh, protein content products to do it my million miles away from where I should have been because just because something's got for a starter just because something is 98% protein don't mean it's a fish can do up with it that's the first thing you got to remember you know you've got to make sure that, that, that what you're using is actually digestible by the fish you're fishing for. That is crucial. And it's a mistake that's made by 90% of bait companies. Other thing is, you've got to make sure you don't use ingredients that are inhibitors to the digestive system of a carp. Again, there's not many people knows the answer to all these, but I do because I've done the research, and um, and I've got a, we, I, you know when I was working, I ended up I think we we spoke yesterday. I did spend a lot of time you know, in higher education, and that helped me. Even though I did nothing to do with 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 chemistry, it, I ended up at a university where I could wander around. And basically do what I want, so I could spend as much time in the you know, marine biology department and biology department or chemistry department. And as soon as somebody clicks on to the fact that you, you that's far far better educated than you at the time, clicks on to that you've got a passion for something. It's amazing how the help just streams in. Mm. I mean, I had, I mean, sadly, there are lots of the people that helped me back in you know late seventies, early eighties. You know, passed away. I mean, I was lucky to be taught by, by some, you know, fantastic people. In fact, I was my mechanical engineering lecturer going tripping back to war history, developed the st uh, the tank stab turret, the stabilisation system that's on modern tank turrets. Right. You know, that keeps it so when it goes up and down, keeps it in the Is same it, place yeah. all the time. Yeah. He, he he designed it. Wow. They lost it. In the Korean War, which he told us the whole story about it, because it was it was first used on a tank in the Korean War, which they tried their best to blow this bloody tank up when they lost it, but the Chinese got hold of it, and that was it. It went everywhere. But 
Anyway, so I was lucky I got scientists I could talk to. And scientists that were, I mean, if you're into, if you're into science, it's infectious. Um, they'll, I had, I had people probably waste a full week on stuff for me just because they found it interesting. Not for fishermen. You know, not, you know, they just thought, well, that's interesting. You know, off they went. Mm. In fact, one of them developed a test for working out the, the nutritional availability of certain ingredients for carp. That I, I, I've tried to introduce this name over the years. I don't talk about HMV, high nutritional. I talk about nutritional availability, NA, because that's what really matters. What really matters is how nutritionally available that food is to that fish. It's not going to make it feel ill. And the some baits will. It's certainly not got to damage its digestive system, which some baits do. It's got to promote all them things. And it's only basically got to be attractive. I think we go too far down the, the, the avenue of attraction. Attraction's pretty simple. I've, you know... Carp are only stimulated by a very small number of things. And I've also found, even when people think they've got a, a new brilliant attractor, when you break it down chemically, it contains one of eight things. One of eight. That's right. it. If it's got one of them eight in, it usually works. You know, so, and I mean, you know, it's, it's that's pretty simple. So if you work on that principle... I decide, and I've learnt all this, it's not come overnight, it's come in little baby steps and stuff, and and it's obviously the other thing is, um, when you start talking about high quality ingredients, first thing that goes up is, pound sign, mm. sadly it does. So, you know, to make the bait that I now use, it's bloody expensive. And it's made and put together based purely on it, the ingredients nutritional availability to carp nothing else and i've got all the i put the, the so old. this means they can eat they can eat it and they're they're feeling a, a result of eating a bait it, it's not it's not upsetting them that's all that matters yeah because I, I you'd be surprised what does upset them i mean if if anybody wants to read a, a, a an interesting paper um by a young man which has been developed further is a guy called i think it was ash girder did one on feeding trials I'm not going to go into it. It's his, it's his, it's his paper, but what he, what he'd found out, I pretty much knew before he'd even, and I hadn't done that level of research. But I don't have to work out that there was something going drastically wrong in certain, certain aspects of the bait world. Certain baits that were going into certain waters suddenly you were getting big fish kills and fish dying for no explained reason. When you start having these baits analysed. You know, not only the trips in here, it is they've got stuff in them that that could is basically damaging. And is, it, still, is it still commonly used? Oh, in bait? So, so, sadly, yes. Right. Uh, yeah, sadly, yes. So, and the, you'll get the people with the 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 biggest mouths in the world wanting to correct it, but not by proof or by research or by any practical demonstration, I'll challenge them all. Bring it, bring it to me, you know, because, you know, you know, I can prove that there's stuff out there that is, if it's fed too much, it's going to kill your fish. How common is it then? It's on every shelf in every single shop in Britain. Right. Right. <laughs> a, a single ingredient or a... It's a mul it's, it, no, there's there's several, but mm. there, there's some that's in, in. You walk in a tackle shop, there is always a bait in that tackle shop. If it was mutually used on one lake to excess, it's going to damage your fish. And this is just from your experience as well, of, of seeing and, and, and putting the um, putting these 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 common factors it's together. It's not well. I mean. I mean, it's not just it's not just me. If you want to talk to the person to really talk to is the head of um, marine aquaculture in Vienna University, who's far better qualified to talk to you about this subject than me. Um, the last paper I got off him, 
he, he'd got some more people working on on the next stage of what he believed. Well, you know, he believed that he could demonstrate, same as Ash could demonstrate, you know, that 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 this actually was something was drastically wrong. Um, Sorry, Dave. How 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 well known is that knowledge? Um, just Google preservatives in bait now. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> so just preserve bait. Preservatives. Mm, the, right. The, the preservatives that's used in baits: potassium sorbate, glycerine, and MPG. All individualistically aren't good for a carp's digestive system. They're all trypsin inhibitors, which means they can basically stop trypsin working completely, which means stop any fish digesting what it wants to digest. You know, that's 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 the, that that's that's you know that was the basis on on a lot of the research and the damaging effects it then has. You know, I don't know if you remember. But we had a little fad, and I was as guilty as everybody, of using high levels of oils in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm. I mean, ridiculous amounts. Mm. Can remember all the fish dying afterwards? Right. You know, there was a hell of a lot. Mm. Well, there was two reasons why that happened. They developed a disease, which is fatty liver disease, through eating oils that A, didn't have a... Uh, an oxidant inhibitor so they were e eating oils that would oxidize which was again contributing to this liver damage and we were just feeding them too much you know as simple as that and yet that correct we corrected that very quickly did we intentionally correct it or did, did, did oh, we yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We, uh, everybody yeah 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 all the hands up we'll use oxidized oils we'll start recommending using less and less and less you know I can, well, I certainly can remember it mm. happening, you know, and and people took notice. Uh, can you remember the peanut thing? When uh, our dear Tim, you know, and I'm don't get me wrong, love him to bits, known him long, long, long time. You, know, he'd read something about about somewhere about peanuts being being dangerous. Mm. You know, we'd no other evidence other than that one paper. And if you read that paper that he'd, he'd used as a, as a, for his argument for stopping the use of payment, peanuts, he weren't, put it this way, as a scientist, I won't want, well, I won't, you know, you don't take notice of one paper, especially when the paper would still got a lot of subjectivity to it, and it also had got... Is this, is this to do with palm oil or, or? No, no, the peanuts, peanuts. So it, so it was. It, 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 I can't remember, but it, whether it was, it was something to do with 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 it. Because the different peanuts have different grades, mm. you know, human grade. Mm. Da, 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 and it's all, all depends on the plant and all the rest of it. But anyway, straight away, instantly, peanuts were demonised everywhere. On a very, very very well put it this way on a minuscule amount of evidence uh, evidence that could really needed a hell of a lot more work doing on it and you know there were back you know peanuts are banned from just about everywhere mm. aren't they you know does anybody know why <laughs> can anybody actually tell me why they ban peanuts i'll tell you why because years and years ago somebody said they were bad for them but the, the, but was you know and this is this is the small amount of evidence that they are you know but so we banned them, which is fair enough. I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, you know, lake owners have the right to do what they want. Hmm. Um, but nobody seems to want to ban the use of of preservatives in carp baits. And why is that? That's what I want to know. How 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 how, why? how is that well, it's, it's I know I know that sounds almost like a silly question, but. If it's if it's as harmful as you say it is, surely that shouldn't be allowed, regardless of any financial. Oh, right, there's two gain. reasons. A, we've no we've no real. We have legislation for carp baits yeah. regulation, but it's not real regulation. It's not based on okay. on um, on what's right or wrong for for fish. It's based really on what's right or wrong for humans, and the, you can't compare the human biology with the carp's biology same as you can't compare 
are humans with the birds. Mm. Give you a, a decent analogy. We go out there and start eating them red berries off of that tree. Um, <laughs> we probably w- some of us yeah. would probably won't see ten o'clock, <laughs> but birds do it every day. Mm. You, know, mm. you know, because they have the biology to cope with the toxicity of them type of mm. type of, of things. Are we better off using freezer baits then? Or oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, you, you better. So that that eradicates it. Yeah, yeah, okay. and that's the, that's where the problem lies. You see, um, you why why it's convenient it's convenient for everybody in the mm. industry to use shelf life because they can store them better they last longer they're also greener in reality if you mm. think about it because they don't need a freaking freezer but don't make it right mm. and i mean um and i'm involved with, with a bait company that does to shelf life i've tr- we've, we've looked at all sorts of variances and stuff to to increase, you know, to, to create a shelf life without using too many damaging things. So we've, I, I wouldn't allow them used on my bait, on my lake, but I wouldn't be too uncomfortable. But that's because I know how it's controlled. What's the best natural preservative that you could use on bait? One I always use. Yeah. Salt. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Yeah. I mean, all, I take I take freezer baits in barrels mm. covered in salt. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I so, have done for years. Mm. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it weighs a ton. Because, I mean, it, it, the barrels I use, this, I used to use really big ones, but I've got a bit, I've got a bit, a bit uh, gaily as I've got older. <laughs> I'm not as strong as I were. So trying to lift them, the ones that I can get about 40 kilo of boilies in, then all the salt, so that you know, by the time you finish, they weigh about 80 kilo. I can't throw them about anymore, so I've got smaller ones. You know, I can get 20 key of boilies in them, and it uses about 16 17 kilos. If and, and I a always particular use the type of salt that you use, yeah, I always use Himalayan rock salt, yeah, yeah. I, I have people yell, Trust me, you can buy Himalayan rock salt, yeah, you can, very I've cheap, got, yeah, you can. You can. Mm, you don't have to go to supermarkets to buy it. Mm. Yeah, so I, I preserve all mine like mm. that. And I mean, it's not, it's not the answer to the industrial problem, but it's an answer to my problem. When I go abroad, I go and get my baits. Usually, I like to. I like them never to have been in freezer if I can, because there's one thing about it. There's not many baits that, that even f- that never ever see a freezer unless the shelf life. So you know, I always wonder what, what that does to a bait does it does it stick a label on it that that you know that then you know i don't know it's something that one day i'll i'll, I'll look at but i've all i know full well i've done always reasonably better when i've gone and picked bait up that i knew was made in morning has been cooled off in daytime and by seven o'clock in the evening i'm throwing it in a lake you know it's quite weird that but you know, and that's what I try and do if I if I you know going back a few years, you know I used to. That's what I try to do at least you know, as much as I could. It's uh, it'd be easy now, but be, before it weren't it were hard. Is there more money to be made in preserved baits? No, it would be much no. easier for the industry if we could just sell frozen bait, wouldn't it? For for, for everybody, if we could just yeah. uh, if we if we'd sell one type of bait rather than have to to, to, to cater for that, surely. Sorry, me, me ears itching. Um, <laughs> Um, no, I, I mean, it's it, it's again, it's convenience. It's simple it as that. It's down to convenience. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's down. It's purely. I can't see any other reason. Somebody might be able to tell me differently. I mean, I, I think there'll be people that sees this that be, you know, spitting feathers. But you know, it's my. I mean, I normally keep my opinions to myself. But have you found that? I, if I'm if I'm totally honest, I found a lot. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information, a lot of which is backs up a lot of what you said, and mm. a lot of it I, I'm not intelligent enough to understand. <laughs> That's it. So I mean, it's actually there. Yeah, it's yeah. everywhere. And it's getting, it's getting, you know, it's getting more and more because you look at look at the fish feed industry. You know, you talk to anybody in the fish feed that makes commercial fish feed. I know, I know, quite a few. You know, one one of them is probably one of the leaders in it. You, know, I, I took, I used to take him carp fishing. You know, fifteen year old. So, I and mean, we've kept in touch ever since. And again, if I need to, 
if I need to know anything confirming another brilliant source, they wouldn't dream of using any of these chemicals in their, you know, the, I mean, he listed the things that, that, that we now artificially feed. It's phenomenal. Mm. You, know, mm. you know, and it's, I mean, most of it's done on economic grounds. But, you know, a pellet, as you know, if a pellet gets wet, it goes off. You know, you know, even damp, it'll start to grow fair. You know, so they don't, you know, they don't use anything like that in 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 the the aquacultural industry. You know, and you ask, you got to ask yourself why, when the you know, which would be far easier for to feed a a a, a pellet made from what I call a wet, wet product than a product that's almost got a moisture content of about four percent. Mm. Well, the start, you know, they have the advantage of selling water, which with this they haven't, you know. So, you know, just tells you. I say you go, you go on and on, but we don't seem. I once, I once was a pro, and this is things that they don't realise how much it upsets me. I was approached by a guy who I knew from another company, another, another, and he he got four and a half ton of bait to get rid of, shelf life. He says, if you, you know, and offered it, he says, you'll go to, I think, it, I forgot what it was. He says, you'll go to so-and-so, don't you? Tell them they can have all this for £3.50 a kilo. Right. Or something like that. I, you know, I'd only give him that. I think it was two quid. And I says, well, what is it? Oh, it's just all, all surplus stock on, on shelves. I says, how long it's been there? He says, I don't know. Oh, Jesus. You know, these are the people, you mm. know, how long has it been there? Don't know. And you just think, and uh, and the thing is, is it's things like that that you sort of think, it's not allowed in, in our industry, you know, food industry, you know, for us to feed us. You know, why is it all right but, to... But carp fishing is such a small industry, isn't it? It's like, how how would we ever be able to regulate that? That easy. How do you think they regulated mining industry when it was small, far smaller than the, than the, the fishing is, the, 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 the participating fishing industries, call it, what you want to call it, it's miles bigger than loads of in, industries that's regulated. So, get, so, so what's going wrong with carp fishing? Because nobody knows. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, until somebody decides that... But we've got, we got so many so-called bait experts. Uh, yeah, we? yeah, well, it's, the, it don't, it's not... It's not just bait experts. It's people that can put a document together that could be presented to be voted on it Houses of Parliament. That's where re regulations come. I know because I used to be on British Standards Committee, and we, would, we never got round to this yesterday. But I was on the Pilkington K, K, K Glass Manufacturing Standard. You know, oh. and that, you know, God knows why I were there. But it was again to do my job, but. All the mining British standards that we did, I was on every one of them, only mm. a group of four or five of us, and we were still doing standards and, 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 and creating you know, regulation and guidance. How difficult is it to get a paper like that actually passed? Um, having not started it from scratch and only being invited by... Uh, it would have to come probably from the EA. The Environment Agency would probably have to put together a proposal, which they would have to then present to somebody um, that funds the EA, and that'd have to have how it's you know who's how it's going to create what what what's the purpose of it, you know what's the aim of it, what's this you know it'd have to have a lot of Technical detail. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of a good analogy to put it to. Uh, and then you'd form a, a group, and that group would go away and be tasked with various tasks, which all I'd ha would have to be funded. Mm. You know, and there'd be somebody that would look at, at, you know, I'd have to decide what aspects of this of the baiting industry needed to be looked at in more details than other. And I mean. Doesn't uh, you know, just because you can make a 
a f- you know just because it's a freezer bait don't make that it mean that it could be it could be not quite right because there's a certain there's a few products that was thrown around for years saw your isolate you know because oh it's 90 it's 78 percent pure protein it totally and utterly unavailable they, can't, they couldn't do it so they can digest full fat soya flour but they can't digest that but worst part about it it had a trypsin it has a trypsin inhibitor so it actually buggered the digestion system so if it was mixed with something else they probably while that were passing through them they wouldn't get the best out of that mm. you know it's again you know i think that's the only way the mm. only way forward and i'm too old to even think about it mm. you know I, i'd be quite happy to to sit on any committee that was going to look at the welfare but the actual you know the administration the legislative part about it and the regulative part about it you know is sorry i've got i ain't got enough life left <laughs> you know it, it's not you know yeah. and i mean we managed to correct itself with the oil thing but we haven't seemed to manage to you know correct itself with this we're still and i've had i've had heated discussions with you know people in the bait industry uh you know, because i understand it's their livelihoods mm. and that part i understand but don't make it right no um, uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, as you know, I worked in mining industry, coal mining industry, all my life. I had to say goodbye to an industry completely in 2015. And that was not because it weren't profitable. It weren't because we'd run out of coal. Mm. It was because it just wasn't acceptable to burn fossil fuels no. any longer. No. And it's not going to be more unacceptable. You know, when you think, when I started the industry, there was 250,000 people employed in the coal mining industry in Britain. There was probably another 400,000 employed in associated industries. You know, to suddenly say, we're going to lose that yeah. over, you know, just because it's the right thing to do, right, that's fine. So, you know, when you look at it on that scale of doing the right thing, then, you know, Shelf life baits. Are it's not. Do you, um, it's, it, sorry, sorry. Do you think it will ever change? Honestly, I, I think if um, it depends if anybody gets. It depends anybody mm. in a. It, I'll give you an analogy. Reintroduction of otters. Why did that happen? I'll tell you why it happened. It was a way of of giving a senior person within the EA what's called a KPI, Key Performance Indicator. <laughs> if we can get loads of otters living in rivers again, it means he's doing his job right. <laughs> he's done his job wrong right. now, though, hasn't yeah. he? <laughs> yeah, but, but it is. You can see where, where they exactly, come from, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. how that happened. Yeah. Well, it needs somebody like that mm. to, 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 to set that. I mean, I used to set people's KPIs, mm. and you used to have KPIs set for me. So, mm. I know, you know. It's out there, Dave. Yeah, it's out, it's out there. Interesting oh, yeah. subject. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't damage your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's what the podcast for, isn't it? You know, it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's, a it's a good forum for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I've you been know, googling, like, I've been talking. learning loads from Google as well. It's mm. uh, it's quite a widely spoken about topic. Actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even to the point where um, dumping bait in the edge of a margin uh, at the end of the session it, it is a yeah, way yes. in which that that's quite that seems to be quite a leading um, yeah. factor. Mm-hmm. Should we go on to your European fishing day? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I mean, go back to the European fishing. I, I, and I take all my bait to Europe preserved in salt, in barrels. There you go. Well, actually, now I don't. It's, uh, it has to be shipped out through uh, all the new co- com- convoluted <laughs> import <laughs> stuff. But still exactly the same. And then I can pick it up in, in, um, yeah. in Frankfurt. I'm going to I'm going to talk briefly about some of the foreign fishing I've done but the the reason I was going to lead into this Bismarck because again it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a, a an introduction to me foreign fishing I mean and I've done it you know we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on the last 
five years. We're not going back to the early 80s and stuff like that when I was, you could do that another time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but over the last few years, it's been all around Eastern Europe, you know, Hungary, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Southern Austria. They're all very close together. You know, in, in my traveling terms, I can get from one to other very quickly. And there is a massive amount of, of potential in that area. Every time I go, I find somewhere new, you know, somewhere that's got something bigger and better. And, you know, you know. and I fish, when I go out there, I fish with uh, my mate, who's a German, hence Frankfurt. And I always pick him up in Frankfurt, or we, we, we drive in convoy of Frankfurt. But the first time, I mean, he's fished in that area as well for a number of years. But uh, again, this is but again a little bit of a sort of bit of education. The first time we fished together on an exclusive trip at Shumbar, before we fished there, it had been what club weeks, so the rules are different. On an exclusive week, you can use bait boats, which is, and I tell them, you know, I said it's going to be bait boats, you know. I says, you know, love them or hate them. You know, it's a bit of a, I, if I'm going, I'm going to have to find one, you know, because I ain't got one then. I said, I'm going to have to find one. And uh, so he says, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he turned, we turns up and we, we, and he gets his bait. Well, I've never seen a bait, but I like it. It cost him 95 euros. 95 euros, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, 95 euros. Yeah. And, and the little control was about this big and it was like that. And when he said, it actually it worked. It went out to where he wanted it to go out to. It sometimes tipped, sometimes it didn't, you know, but it listed. So it's, going back to this story, it listed and it used to never come back straight. <laughs> so I started calling it Bismarck. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Brilliant. Uh, and when I started calling it Bismarck, uh, he says, oh, good name, Bismarck. Anyway, a little bit later, I thought, do you know what Bismarck is? No. <laughs> I said, you don't wear anything about Bismarck at all. He says, no. God, we're so ig uh, ignorant, yeah. Arrogant, yeah, ignorant towards that. Um, Euro Aqua, I mean, um, world record venue. I think no, the world record's what, 112 pound at the moment. And um, you mentioned that uh, you've had one of your most spectacular fishing oh, yeah. sessions ever on that lake. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bill's bizarrely, I mean... I, uh, when I when I first told because me and my friend Steve Weir was the first ever English anglers to fish Euro Aqua. I mean, he'd never allowed in English because he didn't. To be honest with you, he, he lived in his own little bubble. Um, and uh, when I explained all about it to my wife, she says, "That's not your sort of water." And I and. I said, yeah, but but what is? Considering she doesn't take any interest in fishing, she still seems oh, to know what. Oh, of course she does. <laughs> yeah, she says, you know, and, she, you know she's, uh, and I says, yeah, but we're going to be, I says, I, I don't, I'm never going to be one that has an opinion about anything until I've experienced it. And until you've experienced it, how can you? You know, it's like, it's like, you know, ref refusing to take a fiver of somebody because you've never done it before so yeah so um when we first you know we first me and steve first went it was november time i think it was quite late in the year and i, I thoroughly enjoyed the drive and, and 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 i was i had been to eastern europe before you know f we work and things in fact the first time i ever went was in 84 when when the wall was still up so mm -hmm. and i went to poland so you can imagine what it was like then um so it, I was surprised when we crossed the border I expected a big change from Austria to Hungary mm. and there wasn't the houses looked the same the streets looked the same the lights looked everything looked the same so you know it, in, it wasn't like I expected uh, and I mean as you come as you go because you, we drove from Vienna down to down to the lake uh, just before the lake there's a a village called Sumeg and it's got one of the most outstanding castles you could imagine it's on this perfect mound sat on the top and uh, as we came into it early in the morning and it's twilightish and I looked at it and I thought 
Are you sure we're not in Transylvania? Because <laughs> it just looked like straight yeah. out of Dracula. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, we 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 the first trip. Yeah, we say we 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 caught fish to mid seventies. You know, I was still. I wasn't going to say I liked it. I wasn't going to say I didn't like it. Um, was it a busy water then? No, 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 no. Very, very. I mean, very. On that front, exceptionally well run. You know, you you have no issues with people poaching you. Know, every every swim has its own area, and and there's no reason. And he he has now. I think it's two, four, six. Eight, ten. He only has twelve anglers on, and that's full. You know, at most most of the time, they're twelve. What does it feel like when you're fishing there? I mean, um, you said you don't fish too many commercial venues, but that that venue is. Well, the fact there wasn't that many people there didn't really. But yeah, it didn't. Well, I mean, that time we were there, there were two Dutch guys on the other side, and us. That was it, and we got. And of course, the yeah, you know, we it, it does the it does the food packages all on, and you know everything, and you know it's a good. He's a really good host. You've got to be careful you don't get dragged into him Perfect. when he's yeah. got his drinking head on. Because if you're never going to get out of that. <laughs> you know, you have to be pretty firm a resolute, come away. You know, so, you know, so after that first trip, um, I didn't go. Steve went the, the following year, and we had a major issue at work which stopped me from going. Um, but I went with him the year after, in September, um, and we had again multiple seventy pluses, eighties. You know, I mean, I mean, it just I can't insane, remember much it? about that trip because it's it's a it's a it, because of what happened after the following year. I did the same, uh, you know, because I was just going for for like two two weeks or ten days, whatever. Um, I went for the sec the, the third time. Um, and it was a. Uh, it started off steady for the you know I'd I'd caught the first the first night I, I had a sixty and a big fifty and a few others then the next night I had a seventy two but then it it looked as though then it just I had another sixty eight or something like that in in week and a few other fish in between. You know, fifties and forties. You know, you just put them back. You don't. You know, but then it could be quite hot. But then on the Sunday night, uh, the 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 weather came in. And it clouded over, and I thought this this chain is going. This will fetch him on. So I I went at it. I went at it. But then you used to have to use his bait. Mm. He knew. I wasn't, or Steve were using his bait. He used to give it us because it was part of the package, you know. And it used to sit there all week. How you know, much the, bait would he give you? You used to get uh, twenty-five kilo a, a week, you know. And you could a have a particle. As no, no, twenty-five kilo of boilies. You know, it came with 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 package, and he would give you as much. You could have as much maize as you want. You could have if you wanted two ton. It 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 it, it, it you know it was all part of the package, you know, but. You know, it was um, really not what you wanted and not what we wanted. So, I mean, I went out that night and I, I think I umped in 50, 60 kilo with 24 millers um, on the, the area that I'd been catching them from. It was mainly two rods. Did, did you spread it around very much or did you try and... No, because I was already fishing probably about 90, 9,200 metres. So... Sorry, you dropping your baits as well? No, no, you're, you're casting. It's yeah. all Eurowack is all casting. Yeah, yeah but yeah. he let you bet. He let you, yeah. your bait up with with, mm. with his boat. He said, you know, it stands to reason. If you want to get a load of bait in quick, that's mm. oh, go yeah. on, boys. Off you go. Yeah. Um, so I baited it all up, and um, and I, 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 I guess I left it late. I thought I'm going to have a decent night's sleep tonight because you don't get many at Eurowack. Well, I did that night. I did. You know, and just as the first hint of light in the sky come up was there, I got a take, um, and that started it. And it was a fish. It was fifty-eight, but within ten minutes of me getting that in, taking a picture, letting it go, getting up, getting me, 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 
my rod sorted out before I could get my rod sorted out one of the other rods was gone I got that in um, that weighed it photographed it all the rest of it put it back that was 60 64 that fish is now a upper 80 you know um, and that's something that, that I, I'm glad I photographed the smaller ones when I did you know yeah. the 50s because you see them now nostalgia yeah yeah, yeah I mean yeah, yeah. you yeah. see see with you know and you know the you can't can't get away from it no. that lake's a bizarre place mm. so so I've now got two rods out of water um, and I've tried to get the first one sorted out before I got the first one sorted out my third rod's gone so I guess that in that's a 60 66 and a half it's now get it like it's, it's light enough now <laughs> you know so I've photographed put it there so I thought at least that's it I'm going to set all I'll get all the rods ready not cast one after other I'll do you know I'll get them all ready and then when they're ever all ready I'll cast them all back out so I did I got them all back out got sat down you know made myself a cup of coffee got another take I can't even remember which rod that was on we got another take I knew that this was a good fish and it, they got it in meanwhile apart from me gaining him out of bed Steve at side of me he's not had a single blip but that's something that happened there we noticed they get very localised yeah we, we, we found it happened a hell of a lot that um, that sometimes he'd be catching a ref right in centre I'd have nothing were you, were you I mean if you were looking at your your swims I mean was there, was there anything different you know to, to well, what were, you were fishing to or? Uh, yeah because we were fishing a bit like that you know so we was straight in front and I was out on an angle because we were on the point what they call circling point uh, so I mean I, I, I got this fish in as soon as I try to pick it up out of net I can I can pick a 70 plus you know straight up rolled up you know we're, we're sling a net or whatever underneath it this I couldn't so I had to get it water get my mat underneath it and then break it over and I recognised it I recognised the fish it was 80 80, it was 80, just under 88, 87. And, uh, Are they named or recognised, these fish? Oh, I know them all. I mean, I'm so... But there, there's so many of them. Yeah, but, you know, I know them. It was one that I'd seen uh, Frank Smith uh, catch a few years. Well, I seen a picture of Frank with it. I didn't see him catch it. I saw a picture of Frank with it. So I knew that was one of them. Um so he, he got Steve up we did all pictures put it back in and and, and uh, I got the rod back out but shortly after I'd sat back down one of my other reds, rods went I thought this is another good one and uh, you know I got, eventually got that one in um, weighed it did all the other usual things that was 70 I can't remember if it was 77 or 75 Um I think it was can't remember he's got so many of them and then <laughs> I let that go got the rod back out Steven managed to get to sleep we had a little bit of a lull for I would say 15 20 minutes you, you, I mean once you've put bait out that you put enough bait out there just to what to hold a, a, a group yeah. of fish yeah yeah what? So, yeah sorry yeah, so I guess the you know I, I get another, another run by this time it's only about be about seven, half, half past seven, you know, quarter to eight, you know, and I, it's this fish, and I think that's, I, straight away I knew this is as big as the the previous ones I've just caught, and uh, I played, and it, when it rolled over its edge, I actually knew exactly which one it won, well, it was because I get it one I'd seen, um, you know, in the picture thing, and I thought this could be, you know, a ninety pluser. It weren't. It was eighty seven. 87 and something so you know did all photographs but you can imagine that now who cares what happens <laughs> just another 18 okay. now isn't it yeah who cares what happens you know it's like you know it's it's you know it's it's an unreal experience it's one that that at the time well I'll, I'll finish the story it's hard to actually tell anybody because it just sounds unreal um, but my mate Steve says are you going to breakfast Cause he, and I says, yeah, I probably, probably will. Anyway, so I didn't bother putting the rod that I just back out. And because uh, he fully said, leap rods out for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, just before I decided to go to breakfast, I had another take. 
and landed a 70, yeah, that was, I think that was a 75, the other was 77, landed a 75. So, you know, we did photos. So there's one rod left in. And I said to him, are you sure, Steve, you want me to leave it in? He said, yeah, leave it in. And uh, um, off I went to breakfast. And there was, there was, there was um, at least, there was two other parties of English guys there. Um, a Dutch party and no, I think it, I think there was. I think there was only one Dutch at restaurants were English. Uh, oh no, two guys behind us were German, and uh, all of them had turned up for breakfast. Steve never did; he couldn't be bothered. And I mean, sometimes I didn't. You know, it would you know that you know it was just nice to sit down and have a nice cup of coffee, and then the breakfast was just what I liked. So we sat down, and there. Are, I was in late, so because first thing you, they'd say to you, "Have you got on?" And that's what they'd say if they answer. <laughs> How do you turn around <laughs> and tell anybody <laughs> what's just happened? For a start, I thought, I thought, I'll ask. I said, "Well, have you got on?" Turn it round. So there were a few, you know, you got a few of this, that, and the other. And I'm thinking, now nah, I'll, I'll breakfast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 um, and Anyway, I cut a long story short, they all di disappeared off at first. And then my mate, Carlo, who was, was Dutch, says, I see you with lots of big fish this morning. He talks like that. And I says, yeah, I did. How big? And so I says, but it's easy for write it down, I wrote it down. And it was just like... Can you remember the numbers? No. Uh, yeah, well, I still can, because I wrote yeah. it down. Go on, then. Uh, it was 58... 64, uh, 66, 86, 77, 87, 75. <laughs> and if you want, they're all on there. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. And, oh, I know, when I'd finished telling, telling, it didn't finish there this trip. Yeah. It got, it, it, it got, even better. Um, when I got back, I, I yeah, where we were, I walked out path. I could see that my my last rod were out, so I knew he'd caught one while I'd gone. And uh, he says it's in it's in sling for you. I says, it's not my fish. I was like, you know, it's who's landed it. And anyway, he says, you know, it's a good one. I says I couldn't care less. I says it's either yours or it's going back. Uh, and uh, anyway. He says, she opened the sling up. I took one look at it. He says, you don't have to weigh that. He says, why? He says, because I caught it on Thursday. <laughs> 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 and he says, how do you know? I says, flip it over. There'll be a little purple mark on that side. We're, God. Can't you remember we sprayed it? Oh, hi. Yeah. Yeah, so. And that was, that was the 68 I'd caught. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was one of the little ones. Yeah. And I mean, in, I, I can't recall. That morning's easy to recall. Because I is one stage I had it in a vent on me, but in the next few days, Steve had to go home early, so I was left on my own. Um, I caught another two eighties, but I finished off with a ninety four, which is the current world record. A fish called Uno. That's right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, and I think I finished up that trip with. Something like sixteen or eighteen fish over thirty kilo. Yeah, because the old Europeans, all you know, their base, their line of 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 their target line is always over thirty kilo. It's thirty kilo, yeah, which yeah. is sixty six to us. Yeah. Did did you create that session for you? I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, you're obviously you know changing weather conditions and stuff like that. But was there was there something that you done specifically? Do you think that? We, we, that I, I mean, uh, th that particular trip. I'd had my first my first trip. You might as well just. Is there a waste of time? First trips if you haven't got massive amount of detail knowledge about a place, which we hadn't. Because I'm not the sort of person that would pick a phone up. But I could have picked Frank Smith's brain. I could have picked you know somebody else that had been there. But I won't. Because well, hey, I think it's sort of it's a little bit rude. But now that's wrong. That's not stop. Stop. That's not. It's not rude. It's not what I like. I like to do have a voyage of my own discovery. I don't want to be spoon fed. I want to work it out for myself. You know, I don't want it even easy. 
you know, but but so by the time I'd been first time I'd got a rough idea what what to do. But the second time I went, I, I even though I caught a lot of fish and I caught seventies and stuff, I think I, I think I fished to seventy nine and something like that that second time. I in my own art, I know I ain't got it right. It, you know, if it, if I'd have been, I'd have expected of a teacher say, must try harder. You know, knowing full well that I could have done. So when I went back the other time, I'd modified the bait I was using. I'd modified some of the approach. You know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd because I caught too many small fish. That was the thing that 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 I knew. Does if you get it right, you don't need to do that. So I'd modi modified it, modified uh, the size of the bait. Or? Yeah, I'd modified, and I, I, there was no small baits. I didn't take that that uh, none. You know, they're all they're all. I got um, I got I think twenty fours were the smallest. Um, oh right. Yeah, and I got some thirty six millers <sighs> as well. So they they were all twenty fours and thirty sixes. Right. And and um, and then. My last trip, because I you know I went, I did exactly the same thing again, but went for a week, um, and finished up with uh, seven. Do you seven. think with those bigger baits then, Dave, what you were saying earlier about the fish moving off and you know digesting them before they're moving back in? Do you think with the bigger baits that can that can enhance that even more with other fish on the lake. Yeah, well, I mean the other thing is with the big baits as well. At least you, if a, if a real you know thirty six miller, a forty five pound. Well, I caught a forty six pounder. I always remember because I weighed it because I wanted to know how the hell could a, a fish get a double thirty six mil boil in its mouth, but it did, and they're really hard to ca cast. A 30, you know, as you can imagine, mm. it, they never tangle. Tell you that no. now. Never ever <laughs> no, tangle. Never tangle. Uh, and I, I, that, but you could imagine once you, you know, once that's, you know, it were, it were hang, they were still dangling out of its mouth. But you could see how that that's all it could get in its mouth. It won't pick any more up. So if that fish had picked one of that up, that up, it's now going to send it to its teeth, crunch it all up. You know. Get ready for the next one. Meanwhile, the ones that can get four or five in the mouths are in there, and that's the only way I could determine that that's that was what was happening because it was without a doubt that trip I was wasn't catching thirties. I wasn't catching forties. You know, they were all fifties and bigger. Mm. You know, uh, and 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 it. And I'm certain that's what it was, you know. Do you think the advantage with big bait is purely size or, you know? It, well, it, it's the advantage, is, like I said, it can only, a small fish can only pick up so much. It can mm. only pick up so much of that. So it, once it's picked one up, it's got to do something with it. It can't suddenly pick that one up that's got the hook that you want it to pick up. But that 75 pounder can pick four or five up and it gets the hook. Mm. And that's the only way that... I, I can determine it's the only way that I could and, and uh, after that first trip and if you've got to have a, a bait that they really want and they really really wanted that bait that, you know there was no two ways about it I give it to loads of anglers that that went there and a few times and providing they took it in the right quantity they all had mega results is this know. a bait that you use in the UK or is it a yeah, bait yeah. that you fought? No, yeah it's a bait that I, I, I use in the UK hmm. um, uh, and they I mean, like I said, last time I went, just I didn't need it confirming because there's that many people. You, know, me, me Dutch mate, Dutch mate said, "What are you using?" And told him I use nothing else except for that. And and in his trips afterwards, he did as well as I did. How much bait did you get through on that session? Uh, about two hundred and fifty kilo. Over over how long? Two week, and I run out really. You ran out of bait. Yeah, I mean, last few days it was. I might as well not bother being there. <laughs> you know, twiddling yeah. my thumbs. How rare is a result like that on there? No, not that rare. I mean, it, I've no anglers that's gone there and done awful. And I know anglers that's gone on there and had, you know, similar result. I mean, was, I don't think, it, you know, if you got it all out and looked at it on, on paper, you know, probably not. 
But you know, this uh, the potential's there. I think anybody could do it. Mm. It's whether you want to. Mm. You know, I mean, and 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 whether you've got the, the finances because yeah, it's, it's a not cheap place to fish on top of all the bait as well mm. actually while we're talking about hunting because you we, you mentioned balaton yesterday didn't you and you yeah. thought that um carp strains pure blood strains are sort of originated from well balaton i mean i i i, I mean, i've not i was fed this information by uh um initially by a uh a fish farmer and he'd been doing some research on on genetic strains of fish and he says I know you've been doing some stuff for this and I have I, you know, I've been connect, connect, collecting genetic data for quite quite a long time and uh, and he said have you have you seen this and it was and it was basically it was pointing out that this 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 scientist says every single carp in existence Cyprinus carpio carp that's got that that genus can be linked back to the original species that developed, you know, over a million plus years or whatever, from Lake Balaton, because mm. everyone, everyone, that all this genetic data, all tied in with, mm. you know. So, let's if you want to be, if you want to be, if you want to look at it from from a scientific point of view. Uh, if we had a lake that carp evolved from, it's got to have been there a long time, a long, long time. So, you know, all our little puddles in UK. I mean, I'm trying to think: is there anything natural? Might have, a couple of the mirrors might be natural. It's in Shropshire Ch places, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and that's through ground shrinkage, and we've got the lakes, obviously, Lake District are natural. Um, really, we haven't got any. So we'd never have anything like that. You know, everything's man-made, but um, you know, Balaton being the size it is, it's almost. It would have probably been connected to sea at some stage, but become landlocked. You know, you know, or it could be a, a melt, a glacial melt. I don't know, but it'd have to be a lake that's been there for a hell of a long time, because you know things don't evolve that that mm. easily or that mm. quickly, and they use the you know, it, it, there's usually a, some sort of like jerk or a gap that that causes something to evolve into. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot more work to go on that one, but it looks as though that's probably true that every single subspecies that we know as Cyprinus carpio had its origins based in a lake that was in the same place as Lake Balatonis. Wow. Today. You know, well. which is which, which, like I say, it had to be. I mean, we he looked at a few other big lakes in Europe, but we know we know from from history that the the fish weren't there. There weren't you know the, there's no records of them eating or anything like that. But you know the, the 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 fish that we now know as carp has obviously been you know it's been messed around and you know weren't messed around. It's it's been it, it was it, it was genetically modified through intensive breeding to create a fish that was easy to clean and grew fast and that's why we love carp mm -hmm. because that's what they do catch carp out of lake balaton and you 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 you, you took it their ancestry roots well or? yeah other than the problem yeah the, uh, i have caught them yeah and i mean it's rammed with them i yeah. mean it's it, if you want to go to a lake and catch hundreds and hundreds of carp in yeah. a week take yourself <laughs> Half a ton of maize, and, uh, and 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 ability to cook it, and you can <laughs> it will happen for you. Because, yeah. You know, I mean, no matter where you go, as long as you get into the right depth, you know you can get out. It'll happen. I've never come across a lake. You know, I fished shanty when it was prolific. Nowhere near as prolific mm. as that place. Mm. I mean, that is just balmy. Yeah. That's an interesting bit of history, though. Well, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be interested to see what the you know, yeah, the the results of that. Mm. You know. Um, you said to me last week as well that um, are you going away next week? Did you say yeah, one of your walkabouts? You call it, is it like <laughs> yeah. a European walkabout? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going next Thursday. Um, the only thing I know for it for sure is that I've got to be home by the 
4th and well if I'm not home by the 4th of November I might as well not come home ever again um, why is that because the wife's booked somewhere so she's telling me <laughs> I'm going to be home so I'll be home for I'll be home before then but latest is going to be third um, uh, the only bit that's 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 um, I'm going to 100% know I'm, what I'm doing is I've got first week I'm booked on a lake called Zayaki in um, Croatia mm. I get I book it like exclusively you know n hopefully now a couple of times a year but you know this year I've only got one because of Covid um, and a group of mates and like minded individuals we all go and and uh, try and catch the the monsters that live in there I mean Diark is pretty, again mm. it's, it's it's got a similar stock did we do a monster carp there? I think you did yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I certainly know you've done somewhere that looked like there but whether it was because right. there's a few of them yeah, mm. probably I, I, oh yes you definitely did mm. definitely did I'll tell you why you definitely did, did because um, not last year year before when I, when I went um, I was talking to a couple of locals and they remembered them all being there and everything. God, we had these three English guys there. They were right pain in the ass filming and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so after Z Zayarki, then do you, do you, do you are there plans to go anywhere else or? Um, yeah, I've got, I'm going to look at a new like that. I'm not going to mention on here. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's not yet ready to mention, uh, and I'll probably go and fish another one because I'm a member of a. Of a, a syndicate in Austra uh, Australia, <laughs> Austria, uh, and I could go there, you know. So I mean, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's fluid at the moment. It's a fluid, you know. I'll make, I'll, I'll base it on. I'll go to the obviously go to Zayaki. I've never been to Zayaki. I think I told you yesterday. I've never been to Zayaki and never caught a seventy plus. So you know, and it's always. I mean, last year it was balmy. I mean. It, ridiculous you know how many are in there then who knows i mean he, there's that many fish you know like last year i think i told you i mean that trip um we had i you know, i had i had 24 over 60 um and five five over 70 including one scraper 80 but them 60s, there was a good number of them that have been 64, 65. So this year, there could be 70s. You know, you just don't know, do you? But I've also seen it go the way. You know, you know, so who knows? And this Austrian water, how often do you get back there and fish? Uh, again, um, the, 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 the... You've got to swim there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to swim on this one, which, which I, I haven't had much time to do anything because of covid so so i mean it's it's relatively new i've had one trip on it and then last year was mm. um messed up as we all know still not that clear at the moment so still working it out a little bit yeah right? yeah and i mean i'll 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 i can see this being a, a place i'll go to probably a lot more in future because it's it's because when you've got your own swim, or you know, and, and little chalet behind you, it's just when you get, to, you know, it's just easy. For a few drinks uh, in the yeah, evening yeah, as exactly. well, can't oh, you? Yeah. And it's it's just easy. It's mm. just easy that you know that you haven't got to, you know, because some of the, you know, some of the waters I've fished in Croatia are a day ticket. Mm. You know, you, you know, I'm travelling 800, 800 to 900 miles just from Rotterdam to get to them. And then you might not have a chance of even half decent swim for a week and a half. Mm. You know, so you've either got to sort some of task, come, come you know somewhere else, and w come back in a week and a half. So I mean, it's a it can be quite frustrating as opposed to that situation is you know exactly where you're going, you know exactly what you want. You know, it just you know it's got to the point where you know, I, I mean. I'd like to catch one more 90 plus, you know, from, certainly not from, from Euro Acre. So what happens else. then after that? 
um, I'm going to go back to my big game fishing <laughs> yeah. I haven't done enough of that and then I'll probably die <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully not hopefully that won't be too soon Dave um, anyway if you catch anything on those trips you need to send us some pictures anyway yeah, yeah. we'll stick them up on our Instagram page Absolutely. we need to Dave um, that has been an amazing podcast uh-huh. it's like you know um I, I knew that you're experienced, and but there is there is far more to you than just uh, just carp fishing, and uh, you know um, I, I feel like I've no, I've not known you very long, but you're you're definitely someone that is so easy to engage with and uh, fascinating person to listen to. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been Thank a you. pleasure. <laughs> the Thinking Tackle Podcast.